order for the special budget meeting on February 26. All right, please. This is Director Tessie. Please report to the board. 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 Director Tessie. Please report to the
interestingly enough, that is in the town hall, as you know, but we actually need some type of backup capabilities for the generators. Of all the years that we've run generator services, generally it's always been two, three, four days. We've never actually had to leave one of those generators up and running for 10 to 12 days. And of course, what we learned, which I guess if we thought about it, we ought to know, they have to come down for service. So what we'll be looking at is a, uh, either a smaller backup generator for those specific critical circuits and heat, um, or we would look at a way to put a mobile connection in so we could actually roll on a portable unit and uh, fire up the important uh, circuits and communication items until such time as we uh, service our main generator. We'd be looking at the same thing at Eno Memorial and the library. Uh, those would be hookups for specific circuits to heat up the building so we wouldn't have any freeze-up problems. And then finally, at Terrafil School, we're examining the possibility of developing an emergency shelter at that facility. So that would involve uh, a study to see how we could accommodate bathroom showers as well as the generator and necessary switching of circuits. And Interestingly enough, we, we did apply for a grant, and the grant has been accepted now. There's another step in there to qualify. It's an $80,000 grant, and the FEMA people are up today, and I, I must thank There's a lot of, you know, you all see me talking, but there's a whole bunch of backup staff, the other directors and managers that tell me the right words to put in these reports, so they did a good job. Um, for the record, he has the Midas touch. Yeah. Yes. I just have a question on that. Um, with that grant, with congratulations to you and our, all our staff for putting this together. Because that's phenomenal. The turnaround time, I think, was a week to put that grant together. So we didn't have a lot of time. Uh, would that offset that line item, or would that would we be able to get more? Um, well, probably what we would be able to do is get more. Yeah. That would be so we'd be able to do more of Exactly. Because what it might turn out to do after we do the studies is easier to bring a generator in to do the whole building. Um, well, especially our older buildings where we mixed and matched circuits to s separate that stuff out to serve power only to the critical areas is very difficult. So that's something we're not going to know that until we finish our study. So that would be additional. Money. Uh, the second uh, project uh, for FY14 is our center area charrette infrastructure program. Uh, these improvements would all uh, implement uh, for, for a certain phases of the work that were identified in the, the Simsbury Center Area Charette study. Um, it would include uh, primarily improved lighting, landscaping, sidewalk uh, reconstruction, and parking improvements. Uh, we actually have some companion grants that are pending, uh, both at the state level uh, and the federal level, which pro could provide up to a half million dollars. If we do get those grants, a good share of that money would go towards uh, a parking deck uh, behind Eno Memorial, which would serve both the businesses as well as a, a senior community center at that location, if you so choose that site. But this is a very exciting grant that would really allow us to start doing a lot of things that have been identified in our center area. And this would be a companion uh, work to finish up what we previously started with our streetscapes. Um, I know in one of the uh, possibility of doing that, what the cost would be to the town, what the potential savings from lack of power and which would be how, how much of that is contemplated um, in this amount? We have looked at that whole picture at one point. And to do the whole center of town uh, would be an unbelievable number. And then we're from six to ten million dollars. Plus the thing that's often forgotten and we identified this issue in Terraform and we did Main Street and Green over it, but he said it's an underground, a couple of wires, a couple of poles. Well, the dilemma is every single served business is overhead. 
they right. have to <laughs> then do all of their building services, yeah. connections, and switching only. It can be pretty expensive. So what we did in the center, uh, as you mentioned, I, I said those words, underground <coughs> utilities, which is to do a very short core section, probably between Wilcox Street and, say, uh, Plank Hill Road. And the lines actually would not all end up going underground. They would go behind the buildings back on Railroad Street. And then the side streets would, would feed the building. So we would get rid of a section of overhead. Insofar as reliability, um, you would have to, the, the power from Simsbury Center either comes from a place called North Bluefield Junction via substation on Draper Road or out of our big substation up the North End. So there's a lot of other wires. And so even, and you see that, you could live in a neighborhood with underground power, you don't have any power. That's because all your distribution and transmission comes from overhead lines. So it would, ironically enough, the storm last year that knocked out the center, yeah, it would have protected us from that. But that's rare. Most of the problems are currently transmission or distribution lines. Um, the, uh, the increase in the viewership of the annualized cost for lighting repair and driver's work, mm -hmm. is, is that per year, every year? No, that's an annualized cost over, say, a 20-year period, taking into account surfacing and walk repairs. But. If you want to set a sinking fund up, that would work well. But <laughs> no, that wouldn't. In the, in the initial years, that would probably the first eight, nine, ten years would be no. But over time, we'll work out to that's about correct. Fourteen thousand a year, and yep. maintain the improvements. Um, I just, if you could go into a little bit more detail about the question actually Sean asked last night, which is the difference year to year where this particular line item has bumped up a little bit. Uh, the main reason is that parking deck. Yeah, if you remember the old number, um, I think it was down around 1.1, mm -hmm. and so we added in the parking deck. Is the, does the senior center study, though, have that much money to do against parking? Because it doesn't seem to be that much either. Yes. The parking deck does identify that. Right? Yes. Okay. But we're hoping that if we go in that direction, the money for that deck might come from elsewhere. Because yeah. that does drive the senior center cost. Yeah. We um, we applied for the uh, grant <coughs> prior to doing the capital project, so we wanted to include it and then back it out rather than not include it, and then it would be too late to add it. We should get the grant decided to yeah. so put all of the uh, funding in, so you can consider it, talk about it, and then if we decide to take it out, you know, or not get the grant, it would just be reduced by that. <coughs> Other questions? Okay, our next uh, project is, in fact, the Senior Community Center. Um, this is a, a two-year uh, program from FY14 to 16. Um, what I'm uh, suggesting for your consideration in fiscal year 2014 uh, is what's known as 60% design development drawings. The Senior Community Center project is quite complex. It does involve uh, a couple different alternative sites and I think in order for us to make some really informed decisions as to a budget target and exactly what space uh, and program needs we're going to meet, we ought to do those plans. Basically it would not bring you to construction plans but it would bring you to very complete design plans with a very exact cost estimate. Um, you will be receiving a recommendation from the Public Building Committee as, as a result of their study and a lot of community involvement. Um, I believe they're going to be recommending ENO, uh, renovation and addition, in the back. Um, they're going to be looking at a new facility at the corner of Bushy Hill Road and Stratton Brook. And the, th the third alternative is at the Performing Arts Center, which will be kind of a customized design of a new facility at Stratton Bush. We did examine the Performing Arts Center site. It could, in fact, fit there. We did not specifically recommend that because there's obviously a lot of uh, uh, users involved at the Performing Arts Center, and we really, that was not part of our charge to really get into a lot of cross-departmental discussions. But we do have three good, solid sites. We did examine uh, I believe some 12 sites in the town. And Simsbury is kind of interesting. You know, we own a lot of land and there's a lot of stuff sitting around, but 
when you try to identify a site where adequate parking can occur, you've got adequate utilities, it's in a good location, your sites are quite limited. And, uh, and we did not want to pull any private sector sites uh, off the marketplace. Some people did suggest we take a look, but our feeling was a public building, that was not part of their charge. And since there are publicly known sites, it did not really seem proper to pull private sector sites off the market. So you're looking at about 204,000 to do that, 60% design development. Right now we're carrying a construction number of around 5.75 uh, million. That's without a parking deck. Uh, the numbers you're going to see in public buildings are somewhat higher than that because they are carrying uh, cost increase contingency for uh, future years. And they are carrying a complete 100% complete solid program. So we do feel pretty confident that we can get it back down on that 5.75 range if we have to. Rich, that's, that's consistent with any of the sites that you've looked at? Or the pretty much price so. Will be about the same yeah, when you get that you report, it. you're going to see the cost. There's, there's trade offs all the time. Right. If we go to the new site at Stratton Bushy, well, there's uh, a fairly long run in distance for certain community uh, uh, utilities. Um, Eno obviously has a parking deck, and the Performing Arts Center has uh, parking that has to be replaced. So we would have to do some fairly expensive uh, site work. We lose our snow storage yard too. What <laughs> <laughs> um, Our next, uh, the next several items are, are in public works, and all of these items were deferred from last year. And um, actually, some of them have been deferred for several years. The first item is the uh, Public Works truck wash. That could be used for all of our municipal vehicles. It's become especially critical um, because while the de icing chemicals we're using do just an outstanding job, they do eat through our vehicles. We basically have to wash those vehicles completely after every single storm. Um, we also, and, and again, I say this would apply to all our town vehicles, so a good sized fleet. Uh, the guys right now are doing all the washing outside. It's not the safest situation in the world when we're icing. And we're, we also have some issues of controlling that runoff. Uh, we don't want that water just falling into the ground. So that's a $257,000 project. We're suggesting that that be bonded. The next item is a, a variety of projects in the town office involving our HVAC, uh, heating, ventilating, air conditioning control system, so we have better control. Right now, that system has a, you know, in today's electronic world, a super old system. And for you that sit at meetings there, now it doesn't always work too well. Mm -hmm. We also have a number of carpets that need replacing. We've certainly got our years of use out of that carpet, but they are becoming dangerous for tripping uh, hazards. Uh, a lot of that stuff was installed all the way back in 96. There actually is some still kicking around in there from 84. Um, we're also taking a look at the main meeting room for some upgrades uh, to the general visuals in the room as well as improving the auto visual equipment. And this one we're proposing to be funded out of uh, general fund reserves, 107,000. The next item is uh, town teledata. Uh, we've actually talked about this for a couple of years also. Uh, as you know, the school department has linked together a lot of their projects with fiber. Um, we'd like to do the same thing uh, or similar type systems amongst the town offices, Eno, Water Pollution Control, Highway Department. Um, we are uh, transferring uh, a lot of our data uh, over phone lines. It, it, it has a couple problems. We don't get the same uh, graphic interfaces on our screens. We also have a lot of connectivity problems. We have some uh, telephone cable problems that the, the phone company has. So we want to take a look at making that a lot more efficient. Uh, it would certainly allow the individual departments to get stuff out on our website more efficiently. It's, it's overdue. We would certainly be looking at savings by eliminating some of the conventional landlines and to the extent possible to share with the school department. And I, I know Rick has taken a look at that already. 
So that's a $125,000 program. The next item is the flat roof replacement at town offices. Um, the, the roofs, uh, if you look at town hall, it looks like they're sloped roofs, but they're actually in the back where all of our rooftop units are and all around the perimeter of the building. Uh, there are flat roofs. They're old, what's known as membrane type roofs. Uh, we need to use those roofs a lot to get to all our air handlers. So they have to be maintained in a safe condition. We also are supposed to have some safety railing systems up there. Uh, and obviously it's critical that those roofs go with any the leaks in the building. And we've certainly avoided that for many, many years. It's about a $231,000 project. And we're proposing bonds for that work. Our companion project is Eno Memorial. Uh, there are flat roofs over uh, what's known as the Blue Room and over the DAR Room. Uh, there, uh, there's also a slate roof on the main building. Slate roofs last a long time. When they start to go, though, they are problemsome. Uh, they're somewhat more of a challenge up there because, believe it or not, all the underlaying material is precast concrete panel. So it does take a little extra effort to hang those, those slates back up there. We have had some water intrusion. Uh, building and grounds is a you know, kind of control lab, but on the flat roofs especially, they're definitely at the end of their lives. And that's about $117,000. To the mass, maximum extent possible, we would uh, look at get, getting funding out of a couple of Eno building funds. There's a Kensett painting fund as well as Eno uh, trust fund. I think we can get a good portion of the money out of that. What is the lifetime of a flat roof? Depending on exactly what system you use, you can get anywhere from 20 to 30 years. And how old are they? Those flat roofs, I've been here a long time and I can't remember. So <laughs> <laughs> the slate roofs, have, they've had some very minor repairs over the years, but I mean, they, they've been remarkable. So they're, they certainly don't know what I'm We've been pushing the flat roof since I got my first budget cycle here. Yeah. Looking to get those done. Yeah, they 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 had to be put in. I'm thinking late 90s. How does this go? Oh, I'm gonna. Um, as we're sitting here talking about useful life, where this is, uh, and we were also talking about the senior center. I mean, if, if the determination is that's the direction that we go in with this, is there any? ability to kind of maybe get squeak out two more years on these things and kind of combined some of that so um, you see some of these repairs almost be uh, these, re these repairs really stand by themselves uh, okay. that's a very good question and a good point if we thought we were going to be disturbing those areas but these are pretty much standalone areas we would not be going back to them and due to the size of the roofs there would not be any particular savings either and call the roofs lines along the building out the back. That's correct. Right. So, right. Um, the roofs that need to address would be the portion that would be there. Yeah, that's the, uh, the roof over the DAR ring as well as the roof over the blue room. Those are all part of the historic fabric of the building, both on the facade and the interior, so we would not expect to be modifying those two rooms. Uh, we see the other side. Last project? Our last town project is the Farmington River Stream Bank Stabilization. If you had any detailed questions, Jim uh, Clifton can speak to that. But uh, this section of the uh, river bank, as what happens on any river bank on the outside of a curve, is eventually the river wants to move over. Unfortunately, we have a 30 inch. Reinforced concrete sewer collector pipe in there. We really don't want that to end up in the river, nor do we want the river coming into our sewer pipe. So, this is a critical project, um, and it would be paid for out of the sewer use fund. It's been programmed for several years. Um, we're working on the design of it right now and the permitting. Is there funds available for grants? Is there any state funding? That's what it kind of works. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, not aware of anything. Yeah. We have programmed this into our use fund uh, money. So. And the last project uh, for this year is a uh, Board of Ed project, which is a boiler replacement at the Squadron Line School. 
It's a replacing, I, I guess, one of the original boilers, uh, 1968 yeah. um, oil fired boilers. Or you see in that picture, if you have your detail sheets there, those boilers are, each one of them is about the size of this room. Uh, they're real old school boilers. Uh, they've been maintained well, but they're way obsolete and they will start to have problems with the uh, failures on the tubing and so forth. We are planning to put in a uh, what's known as a condensing gas boiler. There should be a considerable uh, energy rebate uh, return on that, and they're very high efficient boilers. We installed those in our Henry James facility uh, last year, and we just had excellent luck with that facility. It's about $850,000 that would be bond funds. There are no uh, state school funds available for that type of improvement. Rich, is that a good number? Is that a very that, that's a very yes. fun number because that comes right off our end of change projects. Yes. Okay. That's good. Any questions on the capital plan for the for first uh, 2014 fiscal year? Um, I just have one question. Okay. What happens is, um, and I left them in my office, I have a cash analysis that I did for the Board of Finance a couple of months ago that shows the cash flows on the old plan, not the new plan, but I do have um, the Henry James project is in. What would happen in year one when we would do some um, very basic borrowing because we're eligible for state bond funds. It takes a year for us. We have to put the project, authorize the project in year one, and year two is to authorize it. And what it is is that um, we would borrow in increments until we finally complete the project in probably two to three years. The final borrowing would probably be after the project is complete, but we would borrow like a portion in the first year for design stuff that they would be doing. And in year two, when the construction fee starts going in, we would start putting money into the account you know, for borrowing. And it would be, you know, working that project in. But, you know, out in the out years I'm working, there's even bigger projects coming down the line that weren't in the cash flow that after tomorrow we'll discuss. It. But um, right now, those projects that were in last year went through, we processed them through, and we did an analysis of how we could fit those projects in. No project's going to be, be able to be bonded fully. Um, the bond sale that's going on tomorrow is um, the for older projects, we have the Sinsbury Farms project that we're selling bonds on. We're selling bonds on a Latimer Lane roof, which was from May 2010, and uh, the West Street Greenway, Owensbrook. We're only selling a portion of those bonds. We're not selling the whole bond as I issue tomorrow. So we do, we just work on what we can fit into our debt schedule at 7%, what makes logical sense. Um, our bond council says 1.5 next year for borrowing. It's just getting us through 2015 is where we need to go because with the advanced refunding, once that kicks in, our interest rates drop considerably. We've been taking, uh, we've seen some savings originally in 2014. We'll see savings in 2015 because the advanced borrowing is paying parts of the interest costs for us. So we're paying on those bonds also. Uh, but it's we're, it's a win situation in this situation. So by 2018. Um, with this borrowing, by 2018, um, we'll be pretty much, there's not much out there for the town. We'll have a rapid decline in debt service starting in 2016. So we can add new debt, and that's what bond council, uh, bond, not, our financial advisor has told us. In, out, in the out years, like in 17, I can borrow $11 million, but I'm being conservative and I'm only borrowing under 10, as I said, let's keep us tax exempt. Purposes. I can give you guys a uh, my cash flow analysis for that. Okay, thank you. This one? Uh, my, uh, my, uh, not on this one, but the one that I just did for the perfect. Okay. Thank you. 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 Th
This is not this uh, cash flow analysis. This is the this is right. Um, no, it could be <laughs> seen on this. I could, yeah, I could probably look. Yes, I could probably re revise it and look at those. Okay. Uh, just for clarification, so 2014, the project says proposed fit within the debt yeah. guideline of 7%. Uh, they, they uh, for borrowing, they, they don't. But they, if it's we, we're, we're funding a lot of it through cash. Uh, so I mean, as proposed. As proposed. With so some of the projects funded through other general funds and some projects, special revenue funds, state grants. Yeah. Right. We because uh, even talking about the squadron line boiler, we probably wouldn't borrow in this year. In this year, we'd borrow in the next year. I was talking to Burke about it. Um, <coughs> Their, it's how they set up their borrowing, how they set up when they can do the project. So, so. short term, um, what we're looking at is making sure that the projects that we approve for the capital improvement program meet in the 70% guidelines. And then we have to have a conversation with the Board of Ed and the Board of Finance and the Board of Selectmen about how the outer years uh, fit and what needs right. to come off and what needs to come on. Right. What we did is put all the projects, uh, we asked the Board of Ed what their projects are. Obviously, they're the big bulk of the projects, and those are the projects that don't fit within the guidelines. So um, it's going to be incumbent upon us to work with the Board of Finance and the Board of Ed and Mary Ann to figure out how those projects fit, with all those factors of how long you wish to bond for, what you wish to get, um, factor into what that's about. Sean? Uh, two questions. You said that bond council said you can do 1.8 this year? I'm sorry, financial advisor. Financial advisor 1.8. Or 14. Right, yes. but obviously, as we just talked about, you can ladder it in, so that's yeah, how we'd make it 2.6 to 1.8. I get that. Right. And what, ha what happened is that some of these projects, like the center area Chirac, yeah. it will probably be not, it'll be several years working towards getting that project going completely. Plus, there is a we see uh, state grants, we see a uh, $500,000 grant. If we get that grant, this could move forward. Um, but it would take time to do that. The um, So we wouldn't issue, because that, that would be the 18th file, like right there. Right. right there. So we wouldn't issue that. What would happen is um, we have the only outstanding project is, I think, the West Street project, and whatever was approved this year, the Owensboro. Like the balance of that project could right. borrow for all of it. So I had factored those in. I have my analysis of So we pay cash for Wall Street? Yeah, we did. We got a grant of $20,000. And we paid cash for the rest of it? No, we did not. Oh, I think you're talking about two different West Street projects. No, we're talking, we're talking about, about the, the new one. The, green, the West Street Owensbrook Greenway uh, project. There were three yes. projects that were put together. Yeah, three West projects. Street Owensbrook. Yeah. 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 It was 358. We're borrowing on that one, okay. yes. That project was borrowed. Uh, the other project, I think we moved to. We uh, moved the uh, police dispatch center yeah. and the uh, original emergency generator improvements to general fund for operating transfers. Okay. So, so we have that information. All right. My second question is, if I add up all the lines that have bonds next to them, mm -hmm. it ends up at 3.3, 3.4 million change, not 2.6 million. As the grand total listed on the second page, less, less reimbursements. So based on the, the way the sheet's set up, because again, if you look down the source of funds column, right, it says bonds, general fund, special revenue fund, wherever it may be. If you add everything up, it just says bonds. And I actually left off the Eno Hall roof repairs, which is special revenue fund slash bonds. Did you yes, that's totally added as general, uh, special revenue funds. Okay, I, I, did, I didn't include that, so. Yes, I have it as 117,670. Right. As special revenue funds. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I left that out of the poll. So that's. And there were two grants for the steep for the 1850. And, um, so we are contemplating them. Uh, well, if they come in. Um, okay, so and I some of those, I mean, we, we would not move along with that project anymore as quickly if we don't get the grants. I'm fine with it. I guess my point is is that we just probably need to clean up the, the well, source uh, of funds column just so there's no okay. confusion there. Because well, if we anticipate additional funds coming from somewhere else, we're not going to bond 1.8, right? We're not well, bond. you have oh. to bond the We have to actually authorize the $1.8 million, dollars, the okay. full dollar amount, and then we take back the dollar amount. But So does that eat into the, the 1.8 that we have available? Uh, you have to authorize the full amount. Understood. Oh, right. But it would. Go to bond Definitely, we would borrow like one, we would have to borrow 1.1, 1 .1. we would borrow like 500 or 550 okay. twice. That's how that would work. But when I, uh, this, Calculation on, on the second page of the draft report says that it's two six four two six thirty. 
Right. So that number did add. So that's the reason we were. My point I, is I can't bring up my. I okay. have it, so we do. We my point is, is, it might just be good to put a slash there and indicate that we are going to look for funds somewhere else, because again, the math doesn't work. When we look I, I will check. Uh, recheck this, but this is what we had. I get I get our explanation here that the math works, but when you look at the sheet, all it says is bonds. Well, it says other grants under source of funding. Right, and when he's thinking the 1850, you're right. It doesn't say the other funding sources of the grants. Right. It just right. says bonds. bonds. I see that. Correct. Right. Yeah. We can fix it because that's 750 thousand dollars that Richard has identified to us. Other questions? Thank you. That's right, from our CNR. Okay, so no CNR. That was <laughs> okay, I'll do the same thing um, as I did on capital, although the, the summary sheet you have is all for the fiscal year 2014 projects. Uh, some, as you see in the Performing Arts Center, they actually have a long-range program, but we have not included that here. Uh, the first item you have is Upgrade Town Software, uh, the MS Office Suite. Um, right now, the uh, IT department has been uh, really economically holding together quite the collection of different versions of Microsoft Office, um, and they've done a good job. But dummies like me need a lot of help to make things work when a <laughs> Word document comes and my software don't open it. But uh, so anyway, the purpose of this is to unify all that in a new platform. Uh, building a lot of the new features that the new software has and just unify everything across all offices so everybody can transfer all documents to all departments and open them up, as well as sharing printing uh, functions. The second item is AFIS. Who knows what AFS is? I learned what that is. It's Automated <laughs> Fingerprint Identification System. Um, we're proposing two of those here. Um, one of them goes in the lobby, and that's uh, specifically for uh, identification purposes uh, for Board of Ed, a number of things that are done in 
the town clerk's office and probate, such as adoption, securities, and so forth, pistol permits. Mainly it's a, a public function. The second machine goes in the booking room, and that's primarily for arrests and other criminal uh, functions. The reason this has to be done is the machines uh, are quite old. Uh, it's very difficult to get parts, and moreover, the state and federal government does mandate that we bring these systems up to current capabilities and compatibility with their systems. But we've gotten good life out of these machines that are anywhere from five to seven years old. One of them is around 20,000, and one is at 14. The lesser amount is because there's a grant associated with it. You get two grants, huh? No. <laughs> uh, the next item uh, is the police department exchange server and, and mail application, which includes upgrades to their software and hardware. I know Rick could explain a lot of details on that if you're looking for that. But essentially, with uh, storage requirements, uh, for various records, emails, telephone conversations, and so forth that are recorded, uh, we do need more storage. Uh, basically, the demands of the, the work we're processing uh, requires it. There will also be uh, redundancy functions to make sure there's automated backup, as well as uh, simplified operations and monitoring for the IT department. But that's a very critical item uh, for our public safety operations. Our next item, again, in the police station is uh, for our animal control officer. Um, right now they have a, a 2003 Ford Ranger truck with nearly 120,000 miles on it. It's a critical piece of equipment for our uh, animal control officer, uh, as well as being used for moving around our automatic uh, message boards. Uh, training programs and educational presentations that our officer does. Uh, the old truck is pretty old, pretty bad shape. It's, you know, by today's standard, it's way under weight. But the, the maintenance last year cost more than the value of the truck. So we're proposing that it be upgraded to a Ford F-150, and I think it's a good investment. The next item is a highway uh, one-ton utility truck. Uh, that will actually be paid for, as you see, it's listed as an item, but it's not listed under general fund. That will actually be paid for out of our equipment fund. That's a very important truck for moving equipment around. It also can be equipped with a plow. Uh, it's a smaller type truck, but it has enough power to move back snow banks to be called the sacks, of which we have plenty. Uh, the next item is a mainline truck, uh, 46,000 uh, gross vehicle weight truck. It's replacing one of the town's existing frontline trucks. Uh, this particular truck will be 13 years old this summer. Uh, we are proposing this year that it be funded out of the equipment fund. This is more or less in recognition of the tight funding in the CNR, but I will caution you, and I know Tom will too, that someday this does have to go back into our general fund. Uh, it's something that occurs every year. There are some other obligations you have in your general fund this year, so it makes sense to take it out of that equipment fund. And we can afford to do it once, but we definitely cannot take a truck a year off of that equipment fund. How much is in the equipment fund? How much is in there right now? 525,000. Well, we do have a five or six year projection on that fund, and fortunately, we have not had to buy any mainline construction equipment. But when you start buying loaders, backhoes, you're looking at big yeah. bucks. We, we, we have basically a, a six year rollout plan um, for that, and, and as Rich alluded to, it, it's it's for as much as the um, the plow trucking expense, but 130,000. We have items on there like a sweeper we've actually deferred for two years it's it's over two hundred thousand we have a um, plan we have to replace one of our frontline front end loaders which during the most recent storm that blizzard um, the front end loader in many cases was the only piece of equipment that could get down the street so if there was a medical emergency we had one front end loader with a plow that was capable of opening up the street to get an ambulance in 
So it, it's critical equipment, and like I said, we have a couple of very large ticket items coming up in the next two, three years. So. And that's why we. Um, <coughs> that's why we are making sure that we buy the truck this year, and then uh, we'll be looking to put uh, that add some more back uh, trucks back into the operating budget and the CNI next year. But a lot of these maintenance items will be done already, so we can move on, make room for that. With respect to that, we just talked about a truck wash on the capital side. Is that the highest priority, or is what you just talked about a higher priority? Well, the, the um, equipment fund was, is one of those ongoing things where it's replacing the large equipment. Everything's been scheduled out, like I said, over the next six years of when it needs to be replaced. The only thing we did um, last year was we deferred um, one of our larger expenses in, in regards to two things, seeing the, the group of expenses coming up, and also somewhat in fear of whether or not that um, state funding was going to be cut to that program. We, we, we definitely went as tight as we could go, but we're seeing, like I said, the two big pieces of equipment coming up in addition to the truck. So are they more important than the truck wash or less important than the truck wash? They are more important than the truck wash. So why are they not in the budget this year and the truck wash is? Oh, I'm sorry. They're truck important. Wash is the capital. They're important. No, no. Let, let me be clear. They're important when the existing we have an existing frontline loader which is reaching the end of its useful life. Right. And it needs to be replaced when it reaches the end of its useful life. Which is it's, next year? Yes. Okay. It's one of those pieces of equipment that you don't want to stretch out and try and get an extra couple years out of. It's, Understood. My point is, yeah. is I don't want to spend two hundred fifty grand on a truck wash if we got something that's more important. Yep. Well, they're actually companion pieces because you know to do the jobs that Public Works Highway does they need the trucks right. with our handy dandy de-icing chemicals if we don't have the truck wash then soon we won't have any trucks. My other point is the truck wash can't plow somebody's road to get that's an right. ambulance. That's that's exactly right. Right. If you're telling me we got an ambulance issue to get there, if that sounds like it's more important to me, if you're telling me we don't, then I think we're okay. I think we're trying to anticipate, you know, this year the governor's budget uh, increases some of our county road funding and local funding, but we know the um, instability of state budget. So I think what you're hearing is Tom is okay with the proposal this year, but we're hedging our bets that the state funding won't Try exist uh, going forward. So we just, you know, just something everybody should know. We're fine this year, but if the state cuts back the town made road funds, then all of the expenditures that we have traditionally historically bought through that fund will then come back to the general. And I just got one more. How does the money get in the equipment fund? Where does it come from? That's direct deposit from the state. It's 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 from that, from okay, state. okay, that's where it comes Yeah. Okay. That's and it's the earmarked. Oh, that, that's 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 right. Uh, the state, town, and road, and the local funding is earmarked. Yeah. It has to go into that fund. It has to be yes. used for that purposes. And that funding was increased this year to the town. Gotcha. Uh, but as we all um, know, uh, yeah. <laughs> Keep your hand in your wallet. Bet the farm on it. So, you know, we're utilizing the funds in the way the state's given given them to us. Yep. But uh, we're a little nervous about doing it because if we do it this year, next year we'll be talking about a whole different funding process. So, this is the correct process this year. But again, uh, these are big ticket items, and if that state those state funds dry up, you know, we have to buy them. They're, they're non-negotiable. Any questions? They can't take back the money that's already in there. Oh, yeah. No, no. They can't do it. Oh, sure. Oh, no, no. Well, they can't yeah. take back the money that we already cashed the check, but they could promise us the money and not send us the check. Oh, yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 The check's in the mail. Yeah, exactly. I was about to go shopping. <laughs> well, and actually, I'll buy it quick. We'll get those funds when they come. They can do electronic. The state has gone to electronic. We'll get them for this this year, but we've already next gotten our share this year. But for next year, now we have ours. We oh yes, it's all right. Yes, we have the money. That's why you know we really should use the money that's there for that purpose. But again, going forward, you may see this item next year funded with the general fund because that fund won't exist. That's all we're saying. The road aid fund has been a pretty erratic fund. It's been stable for about three stable. years, but yeah. in the past it's jumped around. Okay. Uh, the other thing that they sometimes do is they don't really take it away if they don't lose the money. So, mm -hmm. of course, it's a bit of a problem. The next item is uh, an asphalt hot, hot box. This is a portable trailer mounted asphalt recycler. Uh, Tom certainly has a lot of details on it, but um, what it allows us to do rather than grinding up our old asphalt. Uh, from roadways and curbs and reusing it at base, this actually reheats it and 
allows us to use it as an effective patch material. Rich, did you go back to, I'm sorry, Community Farm Boiler? The Community Farm Boiler for 10,000? Just don't take a look for Well, that well, one. Oh, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't have it. All right. Uh, community Farms, uh, actually it includes boiler as well as the related electrical systems to run that boiler. Um, the community uh, farm up on Wolker Road has a very uh, old system with a somewhat creative. unique, creative, <laughs> yeah. homemade design, and it's, uh, I don't think it meets any cold known man. Uh, <laughs> so it's in definite need, it's inefficient, it's dangerous, but certainly, you know, that's part of the capital uh, facility up there, and uh, if we intend somebody to run that place, we need to update it. Uh, you want to, the boiler in the house that needs to be replaced used to actually heat the milk plant. So, it, I mean, it looks something like something out of Dr. Seuss, pipes right, running yes. everywhere. When, we, when we've had to have, um, when we were in control of the farm, we had to have people come out and look at it. It was an hour or so before they could even figure out what was going on. <laughs> it's, it's well past its useful life. It's actually, it's, it's not reliable at this point. And, uh, farm folks are very innovative way they keep things going. <laughs> what you call a beacon mechanical <laughs> systems, they're not so amused <laughs> about fixing them. <laughs> um, the next item, as I said, is this uh, recyclable uh, asphalt machine. Uh, while our pavement management program has kept our roads in very excellent condition, we still have a need to patch potholes. I love uh, that. This, I love this. This is a total recycling. I mean, the blacktop, if you go to buy it new, costs you 85 bucks a ton. And this basically allows you to use it over for just the heat of the propane. Well, the and, and the bigger thing is during the winter months, in the spring months, especially during the spring before the asphalt plants open up, we can actually go out and do instead of cold patch, which we put down and a week later, if you're lucky, it comes up. In many cases, you put it down the next day, it pops up. This is true permanent asphalt that we can put down year round. In small patches, so it's a one-time fix as opposed to a band-aid. Can we rent this truck to Hartford? <laughs> <laughs> we may not get it back, <laughs> Sean. <laughs> the next one is interesting. Is this? Oh, I'm sorry. Just to, is that coming out also of the equipment? That's coming out of the equipment. Okay. So now we're going to have a three hundred thousand dollars approximately. No, no, no. Uh, that's going to start at five point seven. Would you uh, would you all like me to come back and finish? I have to do a oh. presentation on this capital program to the public building committee, well, so know. I don't know what your wishes are. Why don't we do that? Run, run, run through the priorities number one. Yeah. And okay. then I think I think we have other things to do, so we'll right. we'll have you back another night if we need to. Well, I'll come back tonight because I want to do mine tonight. Okay. All right. Why don't you just run through those real quick, and then we're going to take a okay. quick recess. And the next one's pretty straightforward. The Scout Hall boiler, as you know, that building is used for a number of functions. The fuel <coughs> unit is simply worn out, and we are at risk of a full failure. So that's a pretty routine heating item replacement. The next item is park maintenance, three-quarter ton uh, pickup truck. Uh, it's one of their uh, mainline service vehicles. What's the difference between an F-150 and a three-quarter ton truck? It's the Hemi. <laughs> We're a Ford town. We know that Dodge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Who did I learn that from? That's, that's a smaller truck. <laughs> the F-150 is smaller. Right? And it's a $10,000 difference? Yeah, half, half ton versus three-quarter ton. Yeah. It's a lot of money for a quarter more ton. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. That's what it is. I don't, I'm not familiar with the 250. Which one is that? This is the three-quarter ton. For which department? For parts. parts. And what are they requesting? Uh, no, no, how much money? 35. Um, well, we're only giving 30, 30, 35. Wow, the base is 35. They're pretty close, I think. Is it, yeah. what's, the, what's the 150 you asking for? The F-150 is 25. That's probably about 150. Yeah. Depends how they got it. So the, one, the 150 they're requesting maybe a two-wheel drive? Yeah. Uh, oh, yes. The 150 is a regular Yeah, because that's just an animal control vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. So it, that's the difference. The 150 is... Okay, yeah. And they've got money in there to put with a plow radio and, yeah. okay. and stuff. Mm -hmm. And probably, and probably sander. And, and, and what's amazing is you 
could not, without the municipal discount, you couldn't touch either of these trucks or anything near that. That's a consumer. Well, we're charges. You don't want those Hemi engines on. She just sees some Mickey's car with Hemi engines. The next item, again, a park maintenance. Uh, is a greens mower, and you know that is what it is. You want to have a high quality golf course? Uh, no, the pinch oak tree paving that's to improve the driveway uh, going down the hill. It's, uh, we get a lot more popular use down there uh, and to shape the parking lot up. So we're only paving the driveway, we're not going to pave the parking lot. Part of the parking lot, the one that was. Yeah. The greens mower, that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the rotary rough mower, again, to do the roughs on the golf course, and those would be charged back to the Simsbury Farm golf account. We, we cut those last year, right? Yes. Yeah, yes. these are returned from last year. And um, this, um, well, that, that greens mower was a 1993, and the rotary rough was a 1993. Yeah, they were bad shape last year. Yeah. Yeah. And then those last three, four items, those are like the, uh, the low, okay, the, the, the um, trailer. did you want me to do the, just to stick with the priority ones? Or? Yeah. Well, no, um, why don't you just finish the next priority two, and then we'll stop. There. All right, priority two, uh, Tom, you'll have to tell them about the dump trailer and leaf collection. All right, well then you know what, Rich? I think we'll let Tom take over and you're all set. Yeah, I think, let me just look at it. I think baseball it's just the... Yeah, those are DPWs and, and then we have the baseball field conditioner. Again, that's the park's maintenance item. And more of cool building stains. And, and yeah, and that's definitely a need. That building hasn't been touched in years. And then the other items down there are, are LOSIP. And even though that is a direct state, Okay. Looking for him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll be right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, the low sub, even though, as Mary Ann mentioned, is electronic transfer, um, that particular program does require some line item authorization that I can demonstrate that it was approved, and that's the reason it's here. Yep. It's mainly an approval function. This year there is a this year there is an increase in our low sub funding, so we're going to be keeping the payment management portion the same as last year at 157 360, and then we're going to be doing the clubhouse carpeting uh, again, which is kind of dire need of replacement. It gets a lot of use. The other item you see in there is an architectural study for the Performing Arts Center. We also have a grant in to do that work. Um, we have not actually funded that because we're not sure if and when we're going to get that grant. So we have to come and revisit you during the year if the grant develops. That's a, a matching grant too. It's That's correct. So the grant is for, it says $50,000, the grant is $25,000. The architectural study is that would be to look at putting the backstage there in the green room. And again, we would kind of coordinate those efforts based on your decision for the senior. Uh, and the other items that I handed out tonight are the Performing Arts Center items. I'll just briefly speak to 2013-14. Uh, uh, the field drainage and the fencing, interestingly enough, are included in the center area steep program grant. Which one grant? Uh, the field, field drainage of 10,000 and the fencing of six. Um, I've got a steep grant application in there for a number of improvements in the center of town. Those two items are included in it. Uh, the sound towers are an important uh, component uh, at the Performing Arts Center and uh, for all these years they've been renting towers and in their installation. I think looking forward, it probably makes sense to put permanent facility down there. Uh, it would make the uh, Performing Arts Center more attractive because users would have to rent those towers. Uh, 
Rich, if we were to add these to the CNR, would the performance center have the funds to pay the? No. I do not feel confident based no. on talking to Marianne at this point until they get their nonprofit corporate fundraising going. They don't have enough money in their funds. So to if pass. we were to include it, have to be charged back to the general fund. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I will return later if you have more questions. Thank you. Do you need the sheets down or? Uh, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, leave them up. All right. Um, any questions on the CNR? Just. So this this 368 is the number that we traditionally know of, right? So you like 365, 360. It's actually higher. Change. It was uh, what was uh, given to us. A higher number was given to us. This number was given to us by the board of finance. So this is the higher. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yep. This is. Uh, All right. We were directed by the board of finance to increase that number by right. 50,000. Right. And we did. It's um. I can. <coughs> it's the portable radios by the police department. That's why it's for 49,505 and the 368, 241. We come in at 83548 with $9,900 from the subtitle from the police, re uh, it's a police revolving fund that we can take the radios from for $9,900 a year. I talked to the chief about it, and we just we had we had a discussion that there were sufficient funds to cover that on a, ba on a yearly basis. So the number of 83548 is the number that the for all board of finance has authorized us. Mm -hmm. Well, we did. So that's the number they've authorized us. So we actually have fifty grand more. No, yeah, they they said a hundred thousand. We had to split it with the board of ed. Right. So we did. Hundred thousand from what? A hundred thousand more. To the Understood. Senior. What was 50, the 50. what was the original number? What was last year's number? Uh, three. We had three sixty seven eight ten last year. Okay, so we do have fifty grand more. Yes. So this doesn't reflect fifty grand more. Right. It in the general fund we're at seventy three six forty eight in the ninety nine hundred for the police department. Correct. So that gives us, yes, because last year the um, Parks and Rec, uh, the Simsbury Farms was included in our number also, because last year it was $73,000 also. Understood. So if you're telling me that the 50 grand is coming out of a different fund, not the general fund, that does, it, does that count against the CNR? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It does. Yeah. <laughs> that was the reason we did that. It's, it's all counting to the same fund. Okay. So this, we can't add any more to the CNR. We can move things, you know. I mean, just make sure, just want to understand. If you, you just purchase things outright, and I mean, the board of selectmen has the authority to yep. change or to add or subtract, but we can't. The bottom line is the bottom line. Right, and then my only other thing, um, and just from a presentation purpose, where we're paying for the trucks out of the equipment fund, mm -hmm. don't we need to note that under other FS? We, we could. I didn't. Um, I didn't. Because it looks like we're not doing. Because they're not. It looks like we're not doing them. It does look like we're not doing them, and we didn't put them in because it is the town and road account. I just don't want anybody to say, no, you didn't. Well, we didn't get the trucks. You didn't do yeah. it. Well, no, that's good. We, we, we could revise that, that for you under other those, funds. Those you know, not trying to close it. it. But it's what we wanted. Well, we're actually going to show it under the capital, underneath the capital non recurring because we don't really want to show it um, in the capital non recurring because then it inflates our numbers because we're actually doing the total dollar value. Absolutely. Us. No, I, I understand it. I agree that it should be here. I just think okay. so that no one. Or when we all well, the question we is, do we do we want to take it off? Because if we put town and road, we have to put all the town and road equipment sales on there. And that's, uh, and that's just a question. We could show that in a separate we could sheet, show but whatever, we should just take it off. We could we just yeah. won't show it yeah. separately. We probably could just take it off because it is being funded. We were just showing because we weren't funding these oh, items. Oh. These, um, and what, what I wanted to show the board was all the requests that came in. Mm -hmm. So we didn't want to hide the request that yep. came in. No, because, I like the presentation. Um, I appreciate that. Because then the board knows what we're buying mm -hmm. and where we're buying it from. So, hopefully. Um, I assume at some point we'll be talking to Jerry Toner. Yes. Can we ask him why we're going to spend 60 grand on a baseball field for next year? 20. It's the town office building efficiency upgrade improvements. This is 60. Oh, my mistake. Thank you. Well, why we're going to spend 20 grand on people? <laughs> <laughs> I guess, I guess, I guess, I guess, I guess it's because the fields it's more than one dollar, so I don't know exactly what this. Well, when it was. survived my, my pen, pen, it was explained to me that it was uh, to aerate the it was to aerate the baseball field, yes. which, okay. um, according to field maintenance people, uh, you know, needs to be done to uh, keep the fields in good condition. I don't know. I don't play baseball, but. Uh, yeah. So it wasn't very good when I did, so I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe we didn't hear the fields, and I don't know. That might have been my case. Actually, now you got me.
I think we didn't we specifically write that though that we weren't gonna use we weren't gonna use that money for cap bars. For the one we talked last night? Last night, yeah. And you said it just said I don't, said what's not included. I don't think so, Sean. I don't think there's anything in there. It said what's not included, I think. Oh, included. what's not included. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. There was a page. Include, uh, we didn't we didn't uh, include purchasing out of that fund, but if there's additional money left in that fund, ah. then it puts it. We're just not charging the new organization. I got it. Yeah. And just a quick question on sort of methodology. I want to thank the staff for their work, and I know that they prioritize, but I think it would be helpful for the public to know how you prioritize. Do we do a number system? Do we look at emergency first, maintenance? What are our, how do you determine the priorities and how do staff rank items? Um, so just to answer that, obviously, um, in order for the board of selectmen to determine this priority, we ask our staff to self-rank. Uh, and so, I think what you're seeing is that um, this is what they sell for you. Um, so that comes directly from staff, not from No, I just wonder what criteria. Like, do they use, a, well, obviously, we have to put emergency stuff first. That should be well, the top And I think what we, what we directed them is things that you'd like to have that you don't have to have, and two, and then three, but we think that, um, you know, obviously. Because we we'll want to find, you know, and I know right. the first year it was one, two. Everybody knew. They wanted everything uh, this year, and so they're getting the, the hang of it that you might not get it this year, but as long as you put it in front of us, we could get it in another year. So uh, the police department ranked some signs this year, um, radar signs. They ranked, they ranked them as a five. They didn't need them this year, that's what they told us. Uh, they would be nice to have them, but if we could find them all, we would do that. But we had higher priorities. Um, I know that when I was talking to the chief, the animal control officer, that truck's been on there for a couple of years in a row. And I'm looking at the expenses, and after seven months, he's already blown his budget for vehicle maintenance. That has had some serious issues, that truck. It's limping through this year. They do need a new animal control officer truck. And that's one of his high priorities because he has to pick up the animals. So it's essential services. It's yes. emergency essential right. services. Right. And then, and then uh, factors into the age of the vehicle. The, equipment. the other thing this does is it helps us get uh, the items on the table. So um, what we what we do after we see the rankings, even if something's not top priority, we may identify grants that come down the pipe. We may identify uh, regional cooperative joint purchasing. Uh, you know, there's a lot of times that these uh, grants have quick turnaround time and if we already have it on the capital plan, even though we haven't funded it, we're aware of it and we can explore all that. Yep, um, so except for the trucks that we already talked about, everything else that doesn't have a funding source listed is not something we're considering this year? Yes, we're not considering So the tobacco ship reservation, yeah, no. general parks, maintenance building, all those items, we're not considering this year yeah. Correct. at this point? Correct. They, didn't, they don't finish the plan this year. All right, and then, Mary, well, I do like yep. I do like your suggestion of, of looking at that fund. I think, you know, policy, it, what we're going to send out to folks specifically states and America use that money. Right, well. right. No, we're not. We're not going to. We're, we're not charging the youth organizations for capital improvements. Okay. However, um, if that fund does have, there may be offsets because they're they're going to be funding the maintenance. We may have money left in our budget that we used to spend. From somewhere My else. Was, I mean, it's not going to come out of that phone, but it's not going to come out of somewhere else. There may be, um, yeah. you know, our, our yeah. example. Yeah. Yeah. That, that makes sense. I just want to make yeah. sure we're on the same page. No, no, no. Thank you. Um, so before we leave the CNR, is there any other than the item for the baseball field conditioner that we need more information on? <laughs> any <laughs> other items? <laughs> <laughs> in, <laughs> in Jeopardy? That's well, you know, you could always give Tom more money. My my question was um, on the truck for the um, parks department. I mean, I just you know well, maybe Tom and Jerry can take another look at that. You know, I want to make sure that we fire 
deep W trucks before we buy our parks trucks. So yeah. You know, maybe right. there could be an additional conversation on that. Yeah, I mean, and based on Jerry, I mean, Jerry's talked about those mowers for a couple of years yeah. ago, and it's I'm surprised the thing still works. So I don't think we could be taking those out again. The only other item, I, I'm not sure how critical the, the paving at the, uh, the sycamore would be. Again, if there are other items, um, you know, again, we, we you know, something happens with the equipment fund, we need, we need another truck from DBW, um, especially based on this year's usage. Well, you'll hear from Tom in a minute, but you know, obviously, um, you know, we funded the DPW at a bare bones budget. So anything we can do, and given the emergencies we've had, anything we can do to put more money into that account, um, you know, I think might be something we want to consider. Uh, we want to head our back, so we'll take a look at those three items. Take a look at the uh, condition of the paving. Maybe that could be deferred for more years. That would free up some more money to, again, throw back to public works. Yeah, I mean, if you, you know, the field, but that would, yeah, the field, the paving, and the, and the three and a three quarter ton truck, I mean, you're talking about, what, uh, 62.5? The, um, yeah. 52. The, the pinch mill paving? Oh, the pinch mill. Yeah. The truck. Where does that come from? Was that one of Jerry's? That was Jerry's. Yeah, Jerry's. What Jerry said is we're getting a lot of use. If you bend down there, yeah, the tree, no. it washes out, and uh, you know he said it's really getting a lot of use, and he likes to pay. So that's where that comes from. Right? We're going to have to pay it eventually. The question is, can we defer it in one year, given the need of public work? How does the the paving work if it washes out? Yeah, the paving is going to wash out. Still going to be Because when I go by there sometimes during the storms, it's <laughs> it's deep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not intimately familiar with, with, with what Jerry's planning. My understanding is it's just simply the entrance way down yeah, so from 185 right. and then an apron yeah. at the bottom. Not the, yeah, but yeah. but not focusing not down in and around the parking lot. No, but yeah. I mean, again, if we're going to put things around the pavement, we don't want to wash away. Right. 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 It's kind of like a modest driveway. So let me ask this question. Um, if, Tom, if 52,000. Sure. Was available to DPW. What would you, what would you request? Well, depending upon how the the next presentation goes, I think that the, the <laughs> most important request for us would be the um, uh, road and drainage account to make sure we have enough money to, to upgrade our drainage along our roadways. Because the last thing we ever want to do is is spend our money on repaving a roadway and then have the drainage system fail. And if you don't have good roadway drainage, your road is not going to live up to the life that it's supposed to get. Um, basically, what causes the road to fail is just what you said down there at the sycamore trees. When the sub base below the asphalt gets wet, it becomes weak, and then as cars drive over it, the asphalt flexes and cracks, and you begin to degrade your road improperly. So one of the things that we've always tried to do is make sure that we upgrade our drainage along our roadways before we pave them, and that was one of the areas that um, we did take a pretty big hit in this year's budget. So uh, 35 plus 10 plus 20. So sixty-five thousand towards drainage uh, would allow you to make a significant. I mean, yeah. would make a significant difference. That would reduce this. Yeah. Are we only funding though the, the truck at thirty-two-five? Yeah. Well, we're funding the truck at thirty-two-five. Oh, right, thirty-two-five. So it'll be sixty-two-five. Yeah. So would that then go into our general budget? Yes, no, it, yes it would go into your general fund upgrade budget. Yeah, I mean, but the charge back would be the same. No, the charge back would then be reduced. We would be asking for less money in the CNR budget. But we'd be increasing our operating budget? Mm -hmm. By 625. So the offset wouldn't be the same? It would not be the same. It would be interesting. I guess the other thing we could do is we could shop within the public works budget for an item that could be moved out of the operating budget into the yeah. 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 I mean, the bottom line is, I think, what the, so I think what the board's asking you is, uh, would 62,000 of road drainage improvements go a long way with addressing what you need, and yes. if the answer is yes, then we'll come back and figure out the, yeah. how the numbers work or something. Yes. So there's a couple easy, yeah. one easy way is just um, the paving line account pays the pay money up, um, do 50 or 62 thousand dollars of paving on a CNR. Yeah, but do that too. Okay. Okay. 
So why don't we why don't we get back to the board on that? The end with the baseball thing in there, I went over my mouth, but by an area. Any other questions on CNR VIP that you want answered for our next public workshop Thursday? The cash flow is the only thing I yeah. Yes, I have that. Yeah. Cash flow for CCA. Uh, and the revised CNR. Yeah. Can we take out the old? Yes. Okay. Um, all right. Any other questions? Um, why don't you guys flip a coin? Who wants to go first? I mean, CCA, we can get rid of uh, two quickly. That'd be quick. Okay. Come on up, Jeff. It would be tab number 28. Okay, ready, ready to go? Ready to go. Okay, um, mainly for the benefit of Shane and the rest of you for my mantra year after year. Um, but the WP the Water Pollution Control is a, a customer funded utility owned by the town of Simsbury, uh, so we don't obtain any tax funding whatsoever uh, in our operations. So that puts us in a different category from the discussions that have gone on previously. Um, just talking about the, the income side of it, uh, the WPCA decided uh, since our, our operating budget is approximately almost 10% less this year than last year. Uh, we would leave the um, SCT charges, the sewer use charges, at the $335 rate that they are currently. Um, the bottom line for our O&M budget uh, is, is approximately almost 10% less, and that's basically last year we had two large uh, capital items, our CCTV, trailer and our backcon truck and those are not on our capital budget this year. The only capital item we have in is twelve thousand dollars for a new uh, riding lawnmower. Um, yes. <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> um, oh yeah, one more thing for again for mainly Shannon's uh, information. The treatment facility itself is owned, co-owned, if you will, portions of it by Yvonne and Granby. We see flow from both of those towns. As far as the O&M budget goes, they pay their proportionate share of the O&M based on the, amount, the percentage of flow on an annualized basis that we receive. Um, you'll see there's a line for, for debt reduction for a clean water fund, and that is the same total dollar value each year. Um, and Avon and Granby, they have purchased percentages of the treatment plant so that they have a, a guaranteed volume that they can put through the treatment plant. And that's what their reimbursement for the Clean Water Fund is based on. So that said, um, I would say it's a pretty boring year. <laughs> If anybody wants me to talk about anything in particular, um, I can do that. Our budget is very routine, uh, except for the major changes are capital items. Um, Thanks, Jim. And, you can see the projection out into the future. There, some at some point in time, there are going to be some very, very significant capital items in the future. That's exactly what I was going to ask, so thank you for that. Um, I know um, the, this is an unusual budget because it's not part of the operating budget, but um, it's pretty standing. And I think the Board of Finance has asked us um, to take a look at that reserve on the amount of the reserves. And their concern is it's a large number, but I thought maybe you could explain to the Board of Finance why you're comfortable with it being a large number, what you see coming down the path. If you look at the five, six year capital pr 
projection, um, it's gone in a heartbeat. This whole southwest part of town uh, is in the sewer service area. It has not, it is not served currently. Most of the homes there are in the 40 year age. That's approximately the time span of a typical septic system. They are not on large lots. So replacing those septics, if you have to replace the septic where the existing one is, it's a very expensive proposition. Um, once those start to fail, there are gonna be people knocking on our door uh, that they want sewered. And the reserve we've got is absolutely gone, plus some, uh, when that day occurs. Um, the reserve is not large. Um, it's, it's out there. <laughs> we just keep kicking the can down the road. So you 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 don't see it as money that we should spend now. You see that as uh, down payment on future costs for the town. Because if we use the reserve now, uh, we would have to replenish it when we finally and the can is yes. kicked. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, the can gets kicked, yes. and instead of the users funding it, it would be the town of Sinsbury taxpayers' money. Because um, it would have to be... Um, the money would have to come from somewhere. Right. It would have to be bonded. Right. Uh, the yeah. money would have to come from somewhere. And, and currently, uh, there is no uh, DEP funding for these kinds of projects. Um, so there is no federal state funds uh, available for these kinds of projects. Clean water funds? Yeah. There are clean water funds, but not for not sewer for extensions. Not for, this. Yeah. not for sewer extensions. Okay. So where's, at that time, where would the $18 million come from? Well, part of it is in the reserve. Part of it would have to be bonded. Uh, hopefully it doesn't all happen all at once. Mm -hmm. Hopefully okay. it can be integrated over or implemented over a period of years. Uh, the basic point is, though, I understand they see a lot of money sitting there. It's sitting there for a very good reason. I got into this business in 1980. Uh, at that point in time, the EPA's recommendation was 5 to 10 percent of the operating budget go into a reserve annually. Then we wouldn't have had to purchase, we wouldn't have had to have this clean water fund loan for the upgrade that was done in 2006. The cash would have been in the bank. We would have just bought it. Um, no towns do that, <laughs> obviously. But no, our reserve, I don't feel, is excessive at all, given our future liabilities that are sitting out there. And we are using some of those this year for, right. for the Texas mm -hmm. pump station. Texas pump station. And next year it's stream back, our stream bank stabilization. So they are spending down here. Yeah. Yeah. So if this this southwest section of town starts this okay. Okay. problem, yeah, problem yeah. Um, do you anticipate that it will have a continual effect? At, you know, it kind of working its way through the town through the older system by, and it just keeps compounding the issue that we're going to have like a, a snowball effect. So, what we do currently is we go neighborhood, with essentially a neighborhood requests the sewer extension. And those requests are typically precipitated by septic system failures. And the people limp along. From the day that we get a request, it's at least typically two years before we can actually start putting the sewer in the street. So it's not a quick process. Uh, we have limited funding available today Obviously, if there was a massive part of town, you know, we would have to have some emergency get-togethers and push the funding along quicker. Uh, right now, it's a neighborhood by neighborhood thing. Um, it'll happen sooner or later. Uh, all no matter when. And, and I think it, once the, the biggest cost is going to be getting the sewer extended, a, a, a pump station extended, how to serve that area. Uh, once you get into the neighborhoods and then the costs get, get smaller. And a station is expensive and it's excess of millions. Yes. You know, the, today, 
looking at the old designs, I think today there's some other options that could be employed that may bring the cost down uh, to some extent. Uh, but it's still going to be very expensive. Our, our reserve is not excessive. Uh, our WPC is very comfortable with it. Um, they're the ones that ultimately, I know, I know they see it sitting there and would like to spend it, but we don't have, the projects are out there for it to be spent on. It's not, we couldn't lower rates, ultimately, you know, it's pay me now, pay me later deal. So we're accumulating reserve to take care of projects like uh, Wolcott. There are no DED clean water funds for a Wolcott. That's something we have to fund ourselves or bond or buying funds some other way. The reserves is a better way of doing it. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for sure? Just wanted to ask, actually, I don't want to ask this question, but um, uh, within this budget, is there any um, transition of, of your moving on? <laughs> <laughs> no. 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 Jim, no. has the side of you moving on? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, we've got a restraining order. <laughs> <laughs> I got alarm goes off when he leaves town. I didn't put we didn't put anything into that okay. um, for that. Um, Here's why I was going to say you don't even have to talk about it anymore. You want to ask the question, so don't answer it. Yeah, I, I don't know how much we want to get into that at this at this <laughs> meeting. Who takes these vaccines? We can. Uh, I think that would be a good thing. Personally, if I had whoever my replacement is to work with closely for a period yeah, of time. And, yeah, and when Jim decides um, that he wants to notify the town that he's decided to leave us yeah, well, and we get the restraining order lifted. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we have a conversation yeah. with the Jim, just for the record, Jim has been good about talking to us, and then, then we do not have right now an understanding of the, of the date, and we'll continue to work to make sure that uh, he's taken care of and that we transition this thing carefully. Cloning technology just is not coming along. We're working on it. Any other questions? I just, um, while we're here, I just, uh, I know the board uh, is going to have Jim come back. We're going to formally recognize him for his honor. And, uh, but I just want to, I know Nancy had mentioned in an earlier meeting, and uh, Jim is here tonight. And I uh, want to make sure we have him publicly acknowledged for his great job as uh, WP. assumption change would be, the amount it would be, and what that would do to our budget. So before we make any budget decisions, I wanted the board to have that information. Yeah, okay. okay. What I'm doing is I actually did redo the uh, budget uh, for you this evening so that you can see there's two pages. There's the pension assumption where we increase the pension, and it's not as bad as I thought. So um, we have to increase our budget to, it would overall increase would be 1.55%. Overall, if you go to general government. So, That's, Mary, if you just walk us through. So, the budget is presented uh, would, without the. And the uh, contingency operating reserves would be 
Still the 150. 150. Right. Which we could, if, if that, if we settle some contracts, that number could come down significantly, folks. But right now we have some open contracts. What we're looking at is, um, I did it in three phases. The first is the, our, we, had, we went through a, an experience study this year, and um, that did change our um, baseline. So what our baseline was for 2014 is 809.165. That's if we did absolutely nothing, didn't do an experience study. And it goes up to 714. We were at 714.779 on my worksheet, on my memo to Mary. The police would increase from 465 to 572. They had 106,780. The town saw 94,386. General government includes the sewer um, fund, Simsbury Farms, uh, joint board of ed uh, expenses. So those get taken back out of the uh, town pensions under employee benefits because they go to a different line item. Then when we were talking, we based our 2014 estimate on 7.5%. It is an increase, even higher than the, the baseline. And that difference was 133,396. And the police was then, the police actually was a 97,000, uh, was, was less from the, prior, from the prior year. But when we drop it to 7%, this is where the differences occurred. 231,371 was the three in total. If you flip it over, I give you a breakdown. And it's based on percentage of pay, and it's at 15.33%. And you'll see the joint field maintenance, uh, data processing, and for some unknown reason, this is just off a little. But they're all here. And the total is for the funds, their increase was 41,279. The town's portion increased um, 92, 117, and the um, police portion 97. It's off. I can't believe this. 97, 975. For the uh, with the three added is 231, 371. But we're adding 190 thousand dollars, increasing the budget to 18, 318, 902, or 1.55 percent, which I gave you tonight on this. Recommend, I, I actually just changed the recommended on um, this date. So under employee benefits, it's 448747 or 5.7% increase in employee benefits. And the um, general government would go from 18 million, it adds 182. 22, yes. Yeah. It goes up to 18 from 18, I don't know. So, um, so that would give us the 1.55. Did, yes. Um, and the, that includes the, yeah, that includes the budget we presented. Yes. Um, the Board of Finance has authorized us to go to 1.5% in the general fund uh, before the pensions are added up. Mm -hmm. So, um, Miriam, just very quickly, if we were to increase our budget from where it is now to 1.5, uh, you could add another ninety thousand back. And then, if we added ninety thousand back, what would that? What would be adding the pension on to the judge? One point five. Does everybody follow? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we're at. I just want to give you a range of what the board finance authorizes us to do. Right. So we can go up to one point five in our budget. Uh, that would mean that we'd have ninety thousand dollars additional expenditures if we chose to do that, and then we have to add the pension uh, yes. payments on top of that. Right, so, so right now, what we're, we're not going to plug it in. Okay, well, we'll, we'll find. We'll get it to you. Yes. Yeah. Any questions on the pension numbers? Yes. I do. Oh, the pension, it's almost a 1%, right? It's yes, it's, one almost, it's, it's, one, it's, it's a 1% over the 7 and a half. Yes. Right. So, what's so my question is to the average taxpayer, we know the median. Taxpayer would be seventy four hundred dollars. What would that be? Everything else stays the same. How much? That, how much does that family allow? I think we had told them it was close to fifteen dollars a year. Is that right? Right. Oh, no. Sure. So, I thought you did. But I could be wrong. Because what I'm asking is, what I'm asking you tonight is, what is that family?
uh, on a monthly basis. So we're going to add probably with all the increases. All right. No, just in the just, just one percent. He took last year's budget and added one percent. I lost my pen. I don't have a pen. I just don't have it with me. So based on the average homeowner, you're saying? I have. I think you might have gotten that information from David. I did not have that. Well, we'll get to the answer. We'll get to the answer. I'd rather have the answer correct. What is the cost of the pension increase? Yes. To the average taxpayer. Right. To the, the average taxpayer? Okay. Yeah. Because I think it's important that the public understands that yes, 1% is a lot. And I think pensions make up 7% of our budget in general. So that's a, it's a big increase. Yeah. But in terms of dollar amounts to the taxpayers, I want to put that in perspective. And I also just want to reemphasize every time we talk about pensions that our pensions are reasonable. We're talking about twelve thousand eight hundred for a general government employee a year and twenty nine something for police. So when you know this we is gonna be a very emotional topic and I know it's been in the news a lot, but Sinsbury's pensions are reasonable, they're not outrageous like some of the things that have been written. And what's been published recently, um, Sinsbury's plans are um, in the seventies. Uh, the board of Ed is under 70, but overall, it's like when we move our pension plan or unfunded liability for them, 72 and a half percent. Whereas, if we're going to seven percent, which is a huge jump, if we went down to seven and a half, it's you know, if we could smooth, at, smooth this out over a period of years, but until the interest rates start to reserve go back up again in the short term, in the long term, the long term futures right now, I'm looking at they are. They are rising slightly, but they're still not up there. And um, I talked to Ms. Seelman today, and she said to me that um, that's reasonable. She said going to 7%. She wouldn't have recommended six and three quarters, but she did say, you know, 7% would be reasonable. I said, why didn't you go to seven and a quarter? I did ask her, so we could have seen some, you know, or moving it slightly down differently and making this large jump. You're going to feel it this year. And next year, it's already going to be instituted in our numbers. So we're already going to know where our baseline is. Can, can I just uh, point something out? Sean actually noticed something, and I think it's worth pointing out. I also want to make sure I'm right about it. You have numbers for uh, the, the in police in particular in 2014. I'm in the front page there. Yeah. We have a police number for 2014 at 572-421. And then the chart beneath that has a police yes. number of 464258, that's even though that's at seven and a half. That drop is a result of the experience study that this board approved, correct? Exactly. Okay. And it's even lower if we did the baseline, the 572, the 562 on the police side is lower, if you notice that. Mm -hmm. um, the by, right. by about ten exactly. by about ten thousand dollars. It just looks confusing because right now our interest rate is our assumed rate is seven point seven five percent. So actuarially the arc would go up right. as the interest rate goes down, That's but correct. all of a sudden the arc is lower than it was right. last right. year. Right. That looks right. So I, I think and, and thank you for pointing that out. I think the experience study has really made a big difference. We're we're because we would have just lumped mm -hmm. on a bigger increase to uh, an assumption that was not accurate. Mm -hmm. So the experience study gave us an accurate assumption for which we could build and, the new. And that's a baseline rate. for us. This is the first time the town has done this. And I think this is going to be something that's going to be coming down that we'll probably have to do this again in like five years. It's, um, we were probably one of the first communities in the state of Connecticut that did this. So, um, oh. but they are doing, they did the whole, Willimon did the whole, the whole state of Rhode Island. Um, the 39 towns with their pension funds. So they had this experience and they said, you know, to do this. And they rec they've been recommending this for a while. It has this is nothing new, it's just that the technology is here for us to do it. One thing I wanted to point out, um, following up on Mr. Cook's comment, if we had not done the experience study and went down to seven percent, it would have been an additional one hundred and seventy-six thousand on top of what we're doing right now. So the experience study cost us thirty thousand, but it saves us one hundred and seventy-six thousand. So when folks ask why do you do these studies, this is, is well for us there was we didn't know what the outcome was going right. to be, but in this case it was, and the experience study was the demographic assumptions like age of retirement, how many years you're going to work, how many years you're going to live after you retire, and what's the average salary increases. So 
it was our, it's a you know, best practice recommendation every five years because things change over time and you do want to have an accurate picture of what your obligations are so that you can transparently fund it into the future. And that was the theory behind it. And I'm glad you mentioned just the other point is I know a lot of the department heads are been put coming with very tight budgets and uh, I know it's tough when you have some initiatives that you can't fund but um, I think what our employees appreciate is the fact that we are I don't want to say we're pouring so much money into the pension plans I mean it's costing us hundreds of thousands of dollars to pour into those plans to make sure that they're secure so while we aren't we don't have a lot of extra money left to do other things we are ensuring that our employees will have a very sound uh, pension when they leave unlike other towns that are addressing and we and we actually our employees do contribute to their plans right. so our employees are making contributions and i believe tom did we not get concessions this last yes year? we did we did so and that will help that that won't save us any money those concessions no. but it'll help offset the increases the large increases that we're having i think right. that's why our our staff came uh, to the table because we are um, really securing the pension plan and the increases are so significant um, in health workers uh, We've had some big hits this year on our workers' comp or general liability help, so I was explaining to you last night. Uh, one of the things I just want to mention and remind folks is that this is part of an overall comprehensive look at how we've looked at not only our pensions but our negotiation strategies. We started with the Hooker and Holcomb study in November last year where we looked at where their recommendation was to bring employee contributions closer in line. Um, with one another and other retirement plan options. Um, and it's, and our, thankfully the CSEA really stepped up and the, Tom was able to negotiate having used, again, that study. So you say, why do you do these studies? Well, that study was used as a basis for explaining to our employees and our citizens as to why you make changes. So yes, we are contributing more to the pensions, but that's gonna be balanced with employee concessions, as Mary said, going into the future to reduce the costs overall. So it's taking a very balanced approach and not putting it all on the employees and not putting it all on the town. And that's the point I really want to emphasize because it is a, um, it has been a partnership and after the Hooker and Holcomb we get the experience at the end that the head of actuary can give us recommendations based on this. So it's all based on very sound research and thorough look at our plans and our future obligations. Uh, so um, we didn't have a chance last night for Miriam to go over what the overlay on the budget looked like based on what the Board of Finance is recommending. So I want to make sure uh, before we get too far down the road with the reviewing the budgets that you know there is another layer that's going to be put on whenever we decide to send forward. So this is just the 0.5% budget with the addition of the recommended 7% to bring us to 1.55. We actually thought we were at one4 1.84 earlier, and today it was just a simple fix. Yeah. So we wanted to finalize the number. <laughs> so just when they said they're holding us harmless, we could come in at 1.5. Yes. Yes. Correct. Independent of this. Yes. Correct. Yes. And they would add it on after yes. the fact. So we're yes. gonna we're not gonna send them. We are gonna send them, or we're not gonna send them a budget with seven percent. Oh, we're, no, we're, we're, we're sending, sending them a budget 7%. without the seven. The seven percent was not factored in. So we're not sending them. When assuming we're at the end of this, our intention at this point is not to send them a seven percent. Yeah, they they said I think we should send them both. Okay. Yes. Quite yes. honestly, because one is what we would come in if our assumptions were the same, which is what they told us to come in. But obviously, mm -hmm. we want to disclose what that final amount is if they choose to put the full amount in. All right. Uh, I think we have to have conversations and maybe at their meeting tomorrow night. I don't. I don't, the board of finance doesn't decide how they're going to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're going to fund it out of reserves. I don't know if they're going to tax. I don't know if they're going to send it to referendum. So, you know, at this point, we don't know what right. the budget right. mechanism, budget approval mechanism is going to be. Mm -hmm. So we have to have conversations with the board of finance to ascertain what they're going to do. But um, when we adopt a budget, we have to know the full impact both yep. without it. Yep. And if I may, the board of ed is in the same boat on this. So right. Yes. Yeah. They've sent both. They've, they're, they're, they're talking not. about, but they haven't sent it. No one sent anything. Yet. No, they yeah. have not. And but, now I think tonight they're accepting their budget. Um, and they've, they've um, put forward two budgets. Yeah, they do have exactly. Two exactly. Two one numbers. without, one with. Right. Yes. But we don't know what, how that's going to 
their budget is a little different than ours in that they are much larger. So their increase isn't going to be as ours will probably be a larger increase when we send the two budgets in, where theirs will be um, a little, it, it is less. And I think I bet put their top budget in when I did our expenditure worksheets uh, this year because they they gave it to me. That was what they were presenting their budget. Any other questions on the pension numbers? No, nope. thanks, sir. So we'll just uh, refer back to that once we go forward. Tom, welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. And Thank you for what you guys have done for us. Yeah. 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 You've got to stop the applauding for me. I, I, I said it many times before, you know, the things that have happened, it really comes down to the guys who are actually doing the work and the men that are, and women that, that, that work for the town. And, um, looking back at that last storm, which, uh, which was pretty big, um, you know, every, everybody really took a lot of pride in what they were doing, and, and, and I think that's really what makes a difference. The people who uh, work here really do care about providing good services to the town. At the end of the day, um, Saturday, my hardest part was to get them to go home because they wanted to make sure all the streets were clear and passable, and uh, it really says a lot about who we have working here. Um, but with that said, let's jump right into the budget. Um, public Works. Um, Starts off with Public Works Administration, which is basically myself and a catalyst there, my uh, administrator. Um, we have Buildings and Grounds, which uh, has six full-time employees, uh, one part-time employee that uh, works on the weekends. The Highway Department has 19 full-time employees, and the landfill is done completely with contracted services to obtain. Buildings and Grounds, uh, primary uh, function is the main four buildings in the center of town. Uh, we also have um, the bus shelter, the Terrapil Cemetery, um, the, the Buildings and Grounds Park is also taking over the maintenance of Golden Brook Boulevard and lawn mowing, um, something that we've added over the last few years. Um, they really fill in and, and uh, take care of a lot of the smaller stuff um, that you don't necessarily see. Um, one of the big things that, that we've, we've noted over the last few years is they do a lot of work helping out with the programs here at the library and at the Senior Center, all of the setups. Um, they help out some of, the, some of the social services functions. Um, and when it really comes down to it, when you look at the square footage of buildings, the number of occupants <coughs> in the buildings, the, the number of functions, the department is understaffed. Uh, the highway department with 19 employees, um, all, all very good guys. Um, they do a great job in what they got to do. Um, it's a hard job. Um, every single one of those employees is on call 24 hours a day, especially during the winter. Um, this year we actually had to come in, in the, with the worst of situations, we had to come in Christmas morning. Uh, 6 a.m. the call out went in and every last single employee came in. Um, sadly, the guys reported some of them were, were literally in the middle of opening presents and they got up and, and, and came to work and, and not a one of them was late. And, uh, something really to be proud of. Um, we've had five <laughs> emergency or uh, disasters in the last two years. Um, we're, we're getting awfully good at them. I, I'd rather not <laughs> do this anymore. <laughs> uh, whether it be the flooding, the hurricanes, um, the, the down trees, um, <laughs> locusts, I guess, was the, the next one. <laughs> That's one thing I don't think we have a plan for. Um, this, this, um, this last snowstorm, uh, the blizzard, actually looks like it's going to be. Um, FEMA eligible. We met with uh, the FEMA disaster assessment team today. Uh, we submitted our preliminary numbers. Public Works has taken the lead with all of the FEMA um, projects over the last few years. Uh, we submit all of the paperwork to the police, Parks and Rec, the Board of Education, um, Water Pollution Control, um, and for the highway and building and grounds. Uh, it's a tremendous amount of work putting these packages together. Um, and like I said, with our, our relatively small administrative staff, it becomes very burdensome. Uh, but we take a lot of pride in being able to get all we can out of, out of what the uh, federal government has to offer. Um, in terms of roadway maintenance, yes. you and I spoke about. Did you get an opportunity to inquire about anything that might be available to the general public? We we put in an email um, a couple weeks back to um, Tom Gavin, who's the district three, our district coordinator. It does not look right now like there's going to be any federal funding eligible to um, private citizens or to condo associations. Um, we asked him to provide us more information, and he basically said until the presidential disaster declaration is finalized, they have no final answers for us. They can only give us an indication right now that it does not look like it's going to extend um, 
homeowners, to private homeowners. But, um, but it's a question, and we'll, uh, we're to have an answer, but get it out to the board and, and let people know. Yeah, we wanted to get it out on the website as soon as possible, because we have had a few phone calls from residents that had um, damaged, um, whether it was collapsed roofs, um, damage to their homes, damage to heating systems. And, and we certainly want to point them in the right direction if they're uh, services eligible. Um, in, in terms of roadway mileage, it's important to note that the town of Cincinnati has 164 miles of roadway, town roadways that we maintain. Um, this is substantially more than most of our surrounding communities. Not a lot of people realize that. If you look at um, Farmington, Avon, Granby are all right around 100, and we're a little bit longer at 164. Um, it's just that, that much farther in terms of the, the workload we have to do. Um, we also run a, a fleet, uh, fleet maintenance uh, facility. We have heavy equipment, trucks, the police cars. We do the um, town vehicles. Um, we have three, three mechanics out there, and they do a great job of keeping everything running. Um, landfill and bulky waste, like I said, in some ways it's the easiest operation we have. It's, it's contracted out. Um, uh, we have the uh, leaf compost and wood chips made available this year to residents for free. Um, just a small little service we were able to, uh, to provide. Don't you wish it for free? free. For free, you know? <laughs> 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 there, there, there's not much that's free, but you know, wood compost chips. and uh, wood chips. You can get. <laughs> You're going to add some wood chips. Um, we, we, the landfill operation requires manual permitting and reporting. We get a lot of assistance from uh, engineering on that, from Rich Lewitsky. Um, we provide the household hazardous waste collection. Uh, we have been doing that for a number of years through the Metropolitan District Commission. Uh, this year they approached a number of towns, towns that were not within their watershed and said, unfortunately, they're not gonna extend the service to them anymore. Simsbury is within their watershed, just a small little piece of Simsbury um, up along 185 drains into their watershed. So we would have been invited to participate with them again. However, they would have kicked Granby out. And even though Granby had participated in our collection, that would have raised our costs. Um, we had looked at this, um, and we really feel that we can actually, by, by bidding and procuring these services directly, we feel we're going to be able to save the town money next year. But it's a, a big piece of public relations that we're going to have to get out in the next few months, is residents in Simsbury will no longer be able to bring their um, waste to any of the MDC collections as it stands right now. We are trying to work a deal for reciprocity between the um, Metropolitan District since Ray Avon can't grant me for this first year because no matter how much we all try and communicate, it would be awful to have somebody with good intention in collecting up their, their household hazardous waste, trucking it over to Bloomfield only to be turned away. And conversely, we don't want to find anybody from one of the other towns bringing their waste to Simsbury to be turned away as, as well. Um, one of the surprising things when we talked about this um, collection with a lot of residents, they never knew that the town paid. MDC to do this service. Mm -hmm. The way the signs were promoted and everything, everybody thought the Metropolitan District did this out of the goodness of their heart. Um, they did it out of the goodness of their, uh, of goodness of their hearts and about a $30,000 bill a year to the town of Simsbury. Um, so one of the other things we're considering is um, in part to, to really enhance the fact that this is a different collection and also to, to potentially gain some efficiency. We may hold the collection instead of a Henry James, we may actually have it the highway garage. Um, there, there's some potential savings and things like dumpsters set up, um, and we may even have the ability to have the collection indoors um, using the garage facility. So in the event of a rain, everybody will be safe, dry, relatively comfortable. Um, and the other big project we've been working on over the past year is we've been working on a couple different options to improve the townwide uh, recycling rebate. We'll probably be coming to the board of selectmen within the next month. Um, Public Works Administration, we touched on before, it's all of the bids, the requests for proposals, grants, budget, um, staffing issues. Um, this past year, we did a lot with our uh, townwide energy procurement, whether it's liquid fuels, we worked with the Board of Education and Mr. Witzke on that. Um, our electrical um, purchase, we purchased our electricity in uh, large volumes, two years at a time, typically. Um, this past year, for the first time, we actually did a natural gas supply contract. Um, which we took the lead on and the Board of Education joined in with us. Uh, we expect to see significant savings over the next 18 months. Um, just the same way that you can buy or elect to have your um, home electricity, you can purchase the generation. The exact same thing happens with the gas company. So, uh, we're, we're very excited about that. It's, it's just one of those things that it takes a little effort and, and you see small savings, but over time they all add up. Um, we, we run a, essentially a gas station out of the highway garage. We, we uh, fuel up all the town vehicles, Board of Ed, um, some of the regional um, nonprofits, 
and uh, we actually have gotten to the point that we send out our own bills, track and control all of the fuel usage. Um, it's one of those un unseen things that we do. Um, we mentioned before the, the preparation of the FEMA grants, and last year we collected over three million dollars in FEMA grants. So we hope that was a one-time uh, year. <laughs> um, Last year we did the top 10, this year, 10 uh, things that you didn't do that Public Works did. This time we're going to do the top 10 challenges that we're facing this year. Um, first and foremost, we have the longest plow routes in the state, so about 13.7 miles. We're talking to the folks from Avon today, their, their plow routes are about 10 miles. So that means each one of our truck drivers has to go three or four miles farther than their counterparts in surrounding communities. Um, Town's paving consultant recommends our annual roadway expenditure should be about 1.2 to 1.3 million. We have a long way to go before we can actually get there. Um, average custodian, being that we do most of our cleaning at night, the two custodians is almost 65,000 square feet of building per day. Um, we have an ever-increasing number of demands for services, library social services programs, the number of meetings we're holding, our five natural disasters, including two in the last year. I think that number just keeps changing. We have an aging stock of buildings. They're not getting any younger. FEMA, grant processing again, you just can't hit that one enough. We have too many trees along our roadways. If you drive in other communities, you will see that you have the edge of the roadway, and you might have a few feet before your first tree. Where if you drive around Simsbury for any more than 10 minutes, you're going to see the trees are right alongside the roadway. And it's something that we need to begin addressing. Um, unfortunately, we have two of them here. We have one that's actually uh, under the weather right now, but we're losing um, some of our very key town staff uh, with a long history of the town operations. And it's going to make next year a very tough year without Jim Clifton, Rich Zewitsky, and Wallen McDonald. Uh, Rich hasn't said he's leaving. Yeah, Rich hasn't said he's leaving. Rich hasn't said he's leaving. So we really only know one person. We know yeah, one person. Yeah, like a majority portion. And for those who've never seen it, these two guys are fighting because Wally has a clock on his desk, which is a countdown timer to the exact minute of his last day. He's out of here. It has to be set in 20 days. It's not <laughs> to me. I tried pulling, try pulling the batteries, but you know, this thing's go. So our biggest challenge is continuing to provide quality services within a smaller budget, rising costs. And just to point out, if we didn't have the storm, we'd only have top seven <laughs> yeah, I would take that. He'd be fine with two more. We're attempting this year with our budget. You know, we all know that exactly the situation the town's in. Uh, by no means is public works out there in back in the day. And when we're putting our budget together, um, when we only had four natural disasters, in the last year, <laughs> we knew, we knew. And what we look to do is to attempt to maintain our existing services within our current funding levels. Um, so the challenge we have is about 75% of our budget is commodities and services. Um, we buy the very expensive material. We buy concrete and asphalt and heavy equipment. None of it's cheap, and all of it has a rising cost. Um, we have calls from residents. We uh, figured out today it was several thousand calls a year, and, and one of the primary things is they want to live in a nice town. They want things to look nice. They want the area along Iron Horse to be nice. They want the, the, the um, roads to look nice. They want things to be the way they expect them to be. Um, essentially, within this budget, we have no new programs or incentives. We're working to maintain exactly what we have. We are not a very technologically advanced public works department. When I sit down with my counterparts, we are 10 years behind in terms of technology of where they are. We do not, they, they, they're running GPS in their trucks. They have GIS systems to track and maintain what they're doing on the roadsides. We don't have caller ID. Uh, it, it's no exaggeration. Our trucks that we buy are plain Jane functional trucks. Uh, we buy our trucks for about $40,000 less than what a lot of the community around here spec out in terms of what their plow trucks have been done. Um, we're proposing a near zero budget increase taking out staffing. Um, we have an unsettled contract within Public Works and we really don't know what that's going to be for next year. Um, the challenge within Public Works is I don't know what the weather's going to be next week. I don't know what it's going to be this spring. I don't know what we're going to face. Yeah. That should be snowing in about three and a half hours. <laughs> One to three inches. Um, it, it's a highly contingent operation. We, we do our best to, to be ready for the worst situations and we, when we try to do that within a fiscally responsible manner. Um, some of the things we caught before we even presented our budget, last year we had worked to try and get an additional staff person to help out with some of the social services and some of the events here at the library. If that position was a part-time position which was scheduled to begin in January of this year, 
with some of the other staffing changes and other things that were going on, and then by the time we got to the point of putting together a job description, it was very clear the likelihood of that position lasting longer than the six months that was already budgeted was slim. We just decided at this point it's not worth bringing somebody in if we're not going to be able to keep them. So we voluntarily cut that before even bringing that to um, bring the budget in. Um, and again, no new technology improvements. This is just trying to maintain what we have. Um, proposed budget, um, these are all of the different accounts that, that, that I'm responsible for that follow in public works. Um, public works admin, building and grounds administration, um, the main buildings each have their own uh, budget codes. Um, residential rentals, I'm um, proud to say again, we have all six low income residential rentals are actually occupied. Um, which means that the first and foremost we're, we're gaining revenue and second thing we're, we're doing a service to the residents that need that. Um, highway comes into uh, 44310 and 44320. Um, relatively minor increases there. We saw a significant decrease in landfill operations this year. So we're really just about flat. Um, we were actually zero with what our request was um, for last year. We essentially requested the exact same dollar figure we did last year. What is the landfill? What is that due to? Uh, that, that includes the household hazardous waste collection, that includes the upkeep of the um, transfer facility on uh, Wolfram Road. Are you asking why was why the decrease? Why yeah. the decrease? Yeah. The de yeah. de decrease came due to a transportation offset which went away at the end of the CRA Mid-Connecticut project which ended last November. Okay. So it's passing along savings then. Right. Yeah. And Tom, to, Ten thousand. Is that because of the additional uh, lunch? Um, no. no the, the big issue with you know was last year we were able to decrease some of the cleaning costs in there because the painting work was going on. Um, to a certain extent, we took advantage of some of the, uh, the painting and cleaning work going on there, and also some of the work in Eno um, is included in the HVAC upgrades that we have through um, the CIP here in the capital. So that uh, yeah. that that's why we had the savings last year. And is this for? No, no, this is for uh, uh, um, electricity, um, paint and supplies, cleaning chemicals, uh, natural gas, uh, just basically everything, single thing used in the building. The building's and maintenance account, the building's and grounds administration, that has all the employees. Okay. So um, if you see Eno, Belden, um, the miscellaneous buildings, those are within the general fund. Those are actual costs to maintain those facilities. Basically have staff here, here, and, and then here. It, yes, that's okay. With the highway department being the largest, right. just right around a million dollars for staff. Okay. Basically with everything that's been cut and where we're at, I just made it real quick of things that, that were some of our needs and we do not currently have included in our budget. These are things that we hope to get in. Um, we'd love to have, just going from the top down, it's not necessarily in terms of priority. We'd love to be able to offer up to our one administrator the potential for some overtime when we have things like the FEMA, when we have big weather events. Um, the staff person is 35 hours a week. The overtime would actually, unless it exceeds five hours a week, is just a straight time. Um, so a relatively modest amount there. Um, we had hoped to have um, $4,500 for um, a combination of GIS mapping bringing our, our, our paper maps basically into an electronic format. Um, we go back to when we were in the EOC for Hurricane Irene, we had a paper map on the wall with stickies to report where we had trees down, That's where we had water from. Yeah, it yeah, actually yeah, worked though. great. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is when we went to the bigger storm with Alfred, there wasn't enough stickies. <laughs> <laughs> so we can give you more budget. <laughs> right. oh, sorry, we'll call 3M. Um, the other thing that we have in there, um, we, we had a um, grant for the past two years that gave us access to an energy manager. Um, the, the, the purchasing of energy, the tracking of how we use energy, making sure that we're getting all of the rebates and incentives possible, it's a full-time job. Um, I'd love to at least in this year's budget be able to use some of that $4,500 towards a consultant so that when we do do some of our energy procurements and we have somebody to sit there and tell us this is a good deal or this is a bad deal. Um, I can tell you my first year here, I sat down at the time with Brandon Robertson, we received the, um, it's a reverse auction. You get your numbers and you have essentially four hours to make a decision. And you have contract terms and you're going, okay, does it make sense to lock in five years out? You 
know? We don't know. Unless you're an expert in that industry, you can end up really making some big mistakes. And with the amount of money in terms of how much energy the town purchases in a given year, it's just good, good uh, business sense. Um, we, we cut our advertisement budget last year, but if we have to do any advertisements at all, we need to add something back to that. Um, one thing here for postage, and I, I, I chuckle every time I say it, we had, we had added a significant amount to our postage because we planned on doing mailers to all of the areas that were going to be affected by paid. We wanted to actually mail out a postcard to say, we're going to be paving your street this summer, this is what you should expect, this is where you can throw questions. Um, that didn't make it through the initial budget process. Um, so if, if you're interested in having that program, that's where it is. Um, facilities maintenance, which covers the Terrafield Cemetery, um, bus shelter, scout hall. Um, we're really at absolute, right now, what's in the budget right now is absolute bare minimum. It's, it's, it's enough to mow the Terrafield Cemetery and that's it. So if we have any trouble at any of those other facilities, we have no money to do electrical repairs, plumbing repairs, painting. If there's vandalism at the bus shelter, we just don't have money to fix it or we don't mow the lawn at the cemetery. Um, Within the highway department, we had some money in there to um, start tracking it with a better software, the, the fleet maintenance and test equipment that was removed. Um, we had to cut our lead collection at $15,000. Uh, it's a very modest price in terms of what we're getting, but again, in order to bring in the budget of the, the target goal, the, the lead collection was removed. How many people are service How many people take advantage? I'd say at least a third of the residents. Um, and what, what our lead collection is very interesting is in that it's a supplement. We offer two things. We offer the, the curbside collection one time, one pass for each resident. Um, and we also allow free drop off of your bag or loose leaves at the bulky waste facility. <coughs> um, the road and drainage and um, supplies, that's um, the salt, pipe, catch basins. Um, that's all of the tree salt that we put on the roadway. We budget about $220,000 a year for that. And then there's an additional um, $75,000, $80,000 in the concrete products for the drainage that we discussed earlier. Um, the natural gas and propane account at, at the highway was cut. It, it, it's it's, it's uh, at a deficit. And road improvements this year, we had offered to, to, to push it up. We traditionally been $475,000 as a line item in the budget. We had looked to push that up. <coughs> And unfortunately, the number actually had to come back down to 450. Um, ultimately, in order to get to the point that we're not using um, bonding to support our roadway maintenance, we need to work year after year on raising that number. And unfortunately, right now we're looking at a decrease in that number. Thanks, Tom. Uh, we can get a list of all of this for the board. Right. That would be great. Yeah. Uh, a couple things. I think Tom does a great job. We know that. Are we. We. Um, I. I would advocate that if we add back any funding to go to go to this department, I think uh, with the emergency contingencies that we've had, um, we'd like to give them more. I think you could certainly use it. Um, so that would be my recommendation. Two quick things. One is, um, if could you put a plan together to add back the sixty-two thousand back into your operating budget? Because I think many of these little items certainly could be addressed. Yeah. And um, I think that you could also address some of the larger items that you um, have identified. Yep. Number one. Number two, uh, Miriam, with the pension, we're at 1.55. If the board wanted to bump that number up to 1.6, what would that give you in terms of visual? Uh, okay. So those are my two questions on that. And then the other thing is, um, I know I know your goal has been to upgrade the software in GIS. Now that. I don't think there's room in the operating budget, but if you could take a look at um, what you could do long term, uh, we may be able to fit that in CNR. Maybe a, you know there may be some. I think at the end, if there are one-time expenditures, there may be some savings at the end of this fiscal year uh, within the public works budget, and I think that we could support buying many of those items that get you to the next state, uh, right. stage uh, in this year's budget. Uh, because if we do have a good year, you are going to have have money left over. We hate to put that back and then not be able to reappropriate. Right. Um, I think we certainly wouldn't fund ongoing expenses, but mm -hmm. um, you know, I certainly would, uh, like to bring that back a little bit. Right. Questions, please. With the GIS, mm -hmm. I know other departments are interested in GIS mapping too, like the Ridge Chocolate Police. 
what sort of coordination do you guys do with that system? Can you share it? Is there a way to? Yeah, it becomes a town resource, with the exception that there is a slight difference when we, when myself, Rich, and Hiram talk about GIS, it's a little bit different than what the police are talking about with GIS. Right. Um, the, the police, it's, it's a separate system. I think it's a captain system. Um, and, and it's, we'll just say that it's somewhat different. What Rich, Hiram, myself, and, and even um, the tax department will talk about, it, it, it's, it's town mapping with various layers that are built on top of it. And you get to select and choose and decide which layers you want. Um, and some of the information um, would belong solely to a certain department, right. such as um, wastewater control, because the, they, they have some information they may not be, they may not want to be publicly available. They have, may have reasons not to have it publicly available for security reasons. Um, but it, 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 it's all, once you have it built, it's completely shareable. It's something that we could even at a certain point allow our residents to use. One of the groups that use it more than, than, than you uh, think, realtors. When realtors found right. out, find out towns have websites that have GIS, they're on. Mm -hmm. um, what our GIS consultant, that was the first thing he said, is as soon as that URL gets, gets to one realtor who figures out where it is, they're hitting it because that gives them the information that they need in order to, to have better listings to, to tell their, their customers whether there's gas or sewer or, or, or city water. Well, one of the things that I'm curious about is, I see this in your budget, but if it actually impacts lots of budgets, I'm wondering why it's landing in your budget. <laughs> I, 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 there may be a good reason for it, but I mean, that's one thing we're sharing with the technology committee, and that may be something as we coordinate. Yeah. We Jim. have a line, and it's in our budget too. Okay. So it's spread around, and we Hiram has a line. I have a line. Uh, For your own layers. And you guys yeah. are well, we're yeah. <laughs> the base. We we got a big jump on things when our plan of development was done on a GIS base. So it was actually, one of the first times in the state to do that. So that is the base, and then our next big resource is the assessor's office. And basically, what the GIS does is it, it allows you to display data in different manners when the data is related to a place. So Tom can call up all the places where a tree fell down and as long as that, if you had a GPS, what's it called a GPS unit in a truck, you could just drive around and hit it. And Tom is looking for a dynamic display where these things will be coming up on the board. So if you have an emergency, you'll know where the wire is down, the tree is down. That, that's one use and another simple use, something that happens to us all the time. It, you know, we have guys out in the field and there's a question, is this town open space or not? You know, and you have a resident telling you, this dead tree is on town open space. Well, wouldn't it be great if they could have that map readily available to say yes it is or no it is? Do we have an overall number for all GIS requests? Well, there's two initiatives. There's also an initiative to regionalize it through crop. Right. So what we've been trying to do is to see what other uh, yeah. platforms are available and how the town So no, there is not. And Mary, if I can add to that, we met earlier this week, Rich and Hiram and Tom, have to make sure that as, uh, because they're, as, as Mary just said, Crocs got some involvement in it. They're, they're, this is something that's still evolving. And what we're trying to do is make sure that each of the, these departments are coordinating as, as, they, as they're, uh, number one, taking care of their immediate needs without you know, making commitments or going in a direction that will uh, ultimately prove to be less efficient. So. It, there is, in fact, a, a coordinated effort to take a look at GIS as we move forward. And, and I think a little bit on my part is I came from an organization that was GIS intensive. I, I've seen the, the maximum potential that you can do with it. So, and, and I see so many applications that it's just going to help us with better record keeping, better resident service. You know, it just opens up the door so that you can communicate better. Mm -hmm. But it is a big number and has to be sustained through staff. That, but that would be an interesting, no. that's yeah. something no, I'd like something. To, to discuss. We have not, none of us have put the big number in place. That's what I'd like, I'm curious, because I do uh, actually. We're getting close to, the, yeah. to putting forward a recommendation, which we know what's available. Probably. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, but it's not ready. Krog su supplied us with a very invaluable resource, which was just killer aerial photogrammetry. We have some, I don't know, maybe MDCs is better. But <laughs> we have some of the best aerial photography going, and then that's what we're using as our base. Um, we'll try to get a demo put together, but at this point, we just have to pull all the pieces together. Jim's concentrating on his whole sewer system, and my department's with uh, planning is concentrating on uh, land-based. Show me all the houses that are worth a million bucks. Uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, we're putting our drainage in mainly because we're mandated by the state under what's called the MS4 program to do it, but that will have an application for Tom because right now, again, you mentioned, you know, the guy's punching information and rather than coming back and looking for maps, they will actually be able to call a map up right on a laptop in their truck. And, and those and are all identified again, it's up, it's on a GIS. Like, uh, we started two years ago, we put all of our cross culverts, all of our the streams across underneath our roads in, into um, our GIS program. It's actually titled in a payment management program. So now we can actually go out and develop a checklist. And, and, and it sounds amazing to think we could use a pipe. But it's very easy when there's a small little stream that maybe nobody knows about. You don't want to have it where you're not maintaining it, you're not looking at it. So now every few years we can send the guys out, go and inspect all of the cross culverts on the particular plow route so that we can work our way down and make sure they're all getting inspected. So, so where I'm sort of going with this, when the Board of Ed did their analysis of the thing cloud and changed over there that big initiative last year, they said, it, look, it's an initial investment in capital, but if you look at this long term, you're going to see tremendous savings. And what I'm hearing from you is that there may be some savings long term by making this capital investment. But the question is, have we done the analysis of whether that's I mean, I think it, it, it maybe maybe not this year, but going forward, we should begin thinking. You know, will this technology be cool, or will this be something that will save us money in the long term? Sure. It also has some. I mean, we talked about GIS back in the economic development vision some years ago. That has huge potential for when you talk about residential and realtors, but commercial development wise, and right. going through all we've done with the charrette. If somebody can pull down information on a piece of property and they have all that information on what we want them to put there, and then they know exactly what sewer access they have, and um, well, they do have that, but it may, they get it from town staff. Yes, right. And, and so um, you know, we can run maps of we can do that now for the developers, and we do do that. So the question is, how much does it cost to put it online to make it accessible? More accessible. And is it worth the investment? Right. And because um, there's so many towns. Like Sinsbury and unlike Sinsbury that aren't even as far as we are, uh, there's a tremendous amount of cost to do it. All the towns are wrestling with the same. That's why these regional applications make sense. Right. What, what other towns? Oh, you mentioned Avon. What other towns around us are, are using this? Oh. Every town I've seen is not aware of using it to <laughs> some. To some yeah, but not in their truck. Very no, no, few. no, no. I mean, the well, things that you're talking about yeah. are, are well, look, very few. They're, they're becoming, there's a couple different things, and right. not to confuse the GIS right. and the GPS. GPS right. Right. <laughs> uh, I, I'd say right now, I'd say close to half of the public works uh, facilities in Connecticut on their larger trucks have some level of reporting on GPS. So when the trucks come back in, mm -hmm. they drive underneath the bar, which will read where the truck was, when it was, how, how fast it was traveling. Um, a lot of them actually have what's called a ground speed applicator for the um, salt. It'll actually figure out how fast the truck is driving, the temperature, and apply the appropriate amount of salt. And all of that information, when they come back into the yard, gets uploaded. A couple of towns, and I'm, I'm not necessarily a big fan of this, can actually watch their, their trucks operating real time. It, you know, you can watch a map and see the little truck going around. We don't, I, I, I don't see a, it, it's cute and fun, but I don't see a value in it. Yeah, the, 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 real, the, 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 the real benefit, though, to the other system if there's an accident, if there is a question of was your truck there, was your truck not there, was your truck speeding, it's recorded. You, you can give that much better of a response to the resident and say, you know, I can assure you that did not happen. And you might, you must have that. some historical data then to build on as you right. I would say the one big thing you have to commit to would be this GIS. And there were a couple communities that were really in the forefront in the state, Groton, I think. They had big grants associated with military shifts and things. But if you get used to it, and if you put it out there in a public access, you have to maintain it. Right, the key. And GIS, AutoCAD is all about doing maps and designing things. GIS is all about displaying data. And with a good base map and good interfaces, it all looks great. But if you're not updating it, it's, it's, it's junk because people think it's going to be updated. Even assessor data. I mean, what does our assessor want to do? He wants to get your grand list. Won that do? January. Does he much care so much here in October? No. But if somebody goes and hits that data and wants to know the current owner and the current everything, well, guess what? We only update once a year. 
So there are some commitments going forward. In fact, the little things we've been doing, we've been doing fairly economically. The big bucks are maintaining it. And that's what you have to commit to going yeah, forward. Yeah, you have to do the analysis as to whether it's yeah. worth it, whether there are going to be cost savings. No. I mean, it may balance out in the end or it may not, but I think it is worth thinking about the analysis. Mm -hmm. We'll keep working on that. Now. It's not proposing this issue, right. but right. we'll keep working on it so that, uh, with the technology task force. And, and you have to give a lot of due respect to Rick over on the corner here. In the end, this is heavy, heavy <laughs> IT, heavy <laughs> IT support. The GIS we're doing, well, I'm not so good at it. But <laughs> my administrative assistant is quite the whiz at it. But it's based on some high-level IT guy coming in, and we talk to him and say, this is what we wanted to do. And he goes, type 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 there. It's on. See ya. Oh well. And with Joe and I, I well, like and Rick, it's and Rick, Rick are it's in the cloud. <laughs> but with, with, the you need the support, and you got to give it to IT to well, make it work. Well, you have to analyze the whole package. Yeah. No, we, yeah. yeah, I think we your support for it will come back. Yeah. You know, but support for the analysis. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. He has another phone call. Sean. Tom, can you go back one slide? <laughs> Where are those? <laughs> those numbers. In most cases, the bottom line number doesn't match up to what's on the Which bit? The six, uh, three six, three six one four, is that six six three? Is not the three five four eight eight four up. No. Now I understand there's a different, and engineering is not included in that. Right. Whereas engineering is included in this. So that number is higher than. Oh, you know what, what it is? Part of it is um, residential buildings. Residential rentals is, is a separate fund. Right. It is not special part of the general fund. That's special revenue. That's that doesn't work. It's, it's a. It's um, that's, okay. That still doesn't work. No. He came in with. Um, he requested between all of them. They came in with three eight four five one one four, and you have to take out the one sixty seven five eighty one request from Richard, and. The whole public works account, including engineering, in the budget book is three five four eight eight four up. That's the uh, recommended one. Okay. Okay. The requested column. I think Tom is going it's from the request. Three eight four five. So it's three eight four five one one four. With Richard in it. With yes, Richard in it. With Richard. Okay. Three eight four five one one four minus one six seven five eight one equals three six seven seven five three three which is not up there either. Well, I think the question is, where, where's that pulling the numbers? Yeah, I mean, that, yeah. Oh, yeah, again, some of them match up, some of them don't. So there's just, again, I just want to make sure that we're on the safe sheet of music. Yeah. The, 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 the total public works budget is down 2.8%, 2.1%. That's that's up. So. Yeah. <laughs> 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 While we get that information, maybe Rich can do the engineering so that we can sure. let Rich go. Okay. Well, it was just my son reporting that he was very disappointed that his girlfriend skis better than he does. <laughs> <laughs> well, you may yet be invited to ski with him again. Though. That's what I just said to him. <laughs> He'll be happy because he'll invite you in. Sounds like a marriage made in heaven. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, I don't have any nice slides like Tom has, but there are three sheets um, <laughs> of narrative. Um, and Which some staff are we at? Yeah, 19. What, you know, um, but basically, our office provides professional infrastructure, building design, project management, uh, plan update services, 
uh, support for a lot of departments. We kind of run the mapping database uh, management piece for planning and zoning. Um, as far as goals for the coming year, we really uh, do want to finish our uh, departmental transition plan. Right now we run lean and mean. Basically there's one and two-thirds of us and I guess about 13 consultants the last time I counted. Um, we have had a big increase in workloads in our grants as well as the private uh, development side of the business for site work. And accordingly, I do want to increase my administrative assistance time from somewhere between 28 to 30 hours to 32 to 35 hours. That is the one change that's in the budget. Um, we hope next year to finish coordinating the Public Buildings Committee's recommendation for a senior center, as I described earlier. Uh, we have a number of projects that are funded and are in various stages of uh, design. Uh, we have a grant to repair the Drake Hill Bridge Deck, uh, Hop Meadow Crosswalks and Bump Outs, uh, Greenway Resurfacing, uh, Sewers on Russell Lane, Seminary Road, and Longview Drive. So we do have a good backlog of projects which are funded. And then, of course, the other big part of our program is grant administration. Right now we're um, dealing with the... Uh, Let's see here. About $8.2 million worth of grants. A lot of our grants have you know, what I described as very long tails. And <laughs> even though we may have just applied for $1.2 million, we're dealing with closing out $1.2 million from another day, as well as uh, administering the ones in process. And some of these tails go out as long as 10 years. The, uh, last grant of Eno for the uh, air conditioning and so forth as a tenure reporting period. So it's, it's quite a process. Um, our uh, capital project value is quite high. Again, there's a lot of closeout. Not only the projects we're applying for, but what we're closing down, uh, audits, uh, and so forth. Um, right now, as I mentioned, I do want to increase uh, my administrative assistance time up to full time. Um, Um, it's an increase of uh, about if under new programs it's two thousand some dollars. That's yeah. correct. Now I'll describe that a little bit later. Um, right now, our we've just had tremendous increases in uh, our private development projects have, have gone uh, from four point two million up to eight point two million. Uh, what we do on the private development projects is administer all the uh, record keeping uh, databases as well as uh, developing the amounts for surety bonds, handling all the releases of those bonds, uh, and so forth. Right now, we're uh, handling uh, approximately $750,000 worth of surety. Um, and that includes interim reporting for the surety companies. They like to get their quarterly reports. Um, speaking of GIS, as I mentioned before, um, my assistant, who's very talented, has um, acquired the skills to enter GIS data into our system. We're doing all our drainage systems right now. Um, our consultant services accounts uh, have decreased as a result. So in order to pay uh, for that proposed increase in time, I have accordingly reduced our uh, consultant service account uh, that we have been using for all the GIS. We still have to leave some money in there for that programming piece that I mentioned before. Um, our project services include all survey, um, design, plan production, contracting, purchasing, um, all the payments. Uh, those in-house projects that we're doing this year are about $1.1 million. Um, special services, our in-house customers, we provide all the uh, support to the public, public building committee. Uh, capital projects right now, and we, process being closed out or developed is about 8.2 million. Uh, we do all the project control shoots, we do their agendas, uh, we do any of their background uh, uh, documentation that they need uh, for their operations. We also update the assessor maps which were converted to a GIS base last year. Um, and 
as I mentioned, we keep track of our open space program. We handle those grants. Um, we handle a number of the uh, uh, CLNP energy rebates, which was about $400,000 over the last few years. Um, I guess I can just kind of, you know, <laughs> in a wise guy manner, say my office is just the biggest paper chase you ever saw in the world. But we do pretty good at it, and uh, quite honestly, we deliver most of our projects on time. We get them activated within a reasonable time from approval. Um, I think it, it is worth uh, mentioning our involvement with the land use commissions. Um, during the past year, we were dealing with some 21 projects. And a lot of those are big potential tax generators, the Hop Brook uh, mixed-use development over off West Street, the Big White Supermarket, Dorset um, Crossing, Special Needs Housing, and Crofline Subdivision. Again, that has site work alone worth about four million bucks. So if you take the common multiplier, you're looking at, uh, you know, that's, that's maybe 10%. So you're looking at close to... About 90 times that in terms of probably 360 million dollars worth of taxable value. We also uh, are represented on the Farmington Valley Health District along with Tom. I sit on the call before you big board at the state level and the Crock Transportation and Bicycle Committee. And we do a lot of work with water pollution control. Uh, we work on the facility connection chart study last year. Which uh, resulted in a new type of program which we think is more equitable uh, to the developers in town. And I also sit on a school facility committee uh, with Tamara. So that's kind of a quick rundown of where we're at. Some of the big things that are coming up uh, immediately this year, we're going to be closing on phase 2A of the Ethel Walker uh, school process. We have a grant for about $670,000 in the process in that right now. That's been somewhat of a challenge in that the state person that I dealt with retired, so I'm dealing with someone else down there and bringing them up to speed. Uh, so it's been an exciting year, and uh, I see next year uh, being equally exciting. The big project is the Wolfe Road Pump Station, which is an environmentally critical piece uh, in our system, and uh, that's been out to bid and should go to construction. And Jim does a great job you know, on, on the on-the-ground part of it. But just very briefly, we've held all the uh, costs the same in our various line items. Again, they are pretty much strictly support in-house type items, materials, supplies. Certainly to do what we do, there are big costs out there. But for the consultants, those costs are in the various projects. If you look at our breakdown on capital projects, you'll see line items in there for surveyors, engineers, testing laboratories. Uh, that's another interesting area that we work on. Tom mentioned the, the landfill. There's probably about $15,000 in there for testing. And we run about five different programs that require uh, numerous testings over the years required by the state. Um, the transfer station requires quarterly reporting. We do an annual report on recycling. We basically put together about 32 different reports per year. And I, I really shouldn't say we, it's kind of John Sikorsky, my assistant, that does all of that. So, um, so all in all, with the increased workload we've seen uh, and our GIS efforts, I think it's very worthwhile to, to bring my part-time person up to full-time. And then they say I can compensate that by reducing my consultant fees. So basically, it's about a $2,600 shift from consultant services. Well, actually, I, I took more than that out of consultant services to cover the benefits, which are reflected in another budget. Okay. Good job. Good job. Questions for Rich? Um, I don't know if I want to be that person. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Curious. Um, the Hartford Current, under diesel subscriptions, do you, we actually... Each no, not subscribe. There's one for us to put out there. And I took mine out. I'm going to share with downstairs. But I, get I get it earlier, so you guys better be working on it. I get it first. I pick it up outside. We have to do that on the ground. I do too. Demonstration of the advertising. 
Yeah, yeah. I have to save mine. Yeah. Yeah. My public notices, I have to and save mine. Yeah. Uh, assessors have to take, um, they have to do the obituary. I mean, yes. Because we, have, yeah, because you have to, you know, if there's elderly, elderly benefits and if somebody passes, they have to take them off. The other big expenses yeah. we have are maintenance. We run some pretty expensive plotters and printers and copiers. We can get a and you know, they're $15,000 machines, so they're well worth having a $480 service contract. Yeah. Yeah. And if they go down, we're out of business. Yeah. Okay. Other questions for Rich? Okay. Not necessarily budget related, but Big Y right has been approved at the land use level. Um, we've computed all of their surety bond amounts that they need to do. They've been through the WPC A process and they're waiting for a state traffic commission permit. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, so that's the hold up really. Yeah, they, yeah. Have, yeah. A meeting, they have a meeting Friday with the state DOT and uh, our staff is up to meet there. They need to move off into the meeting with the state traffic commission. Then let me know their results, their applications. Yeah. But where they support them. Other questions? Any additional information for Rich? Uh, any other questions? Right. Thanks, Rich. Thanks, Rich. Um, getting back to public works, if you want to, I think we have, just to recap, the budget's we've asked for some additional information tonight uh, that we'll get on Thursday. If anyone thinks of anything more they want, let us know. Um, Marianne's going to calculate what the cost of the pension increases for the average taxpayer. Uh, we're going to get uh, GIS plan recommendation. We're going to get a report from Fort Tom as to what uh, he would do with the additional CNR funds. Um, I asked what the amount available for the budget goes to 1.6. Uh, we're going to get a copy of the slides from Public Works. Uh, we are going to get a cash flow for CIP. Um, and that's all I have for to do. Anyone else need anything? Okay. Yeah. So we're going to get a clarification on the public works budget. Right. I don't know if we're going to get that tonight. Because that's a big deal. I mean, that's mm -hmm. almost the whole point in the budget. So well, we, we the number in your book is correct. The question is where it comes out. His numbers are where it's clarified. Right. right. And, 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 and we just were looking at our numbers. Here and it's, it's a difference that he's showing, but um, that's what you were requesting. So what we'll do is we can't get that tonight, but we, uh, we'll get that for you Thursday, and uh, then we'll get a complete list of what Tom is requesting back in the public budget. Good? Okay. Uh, can we have a motion to adjourn? All in favor? Aye. We are adjourned. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.